go out and do this. So we dedicated every second of our lives to to boxing, studying boxing, training, uh, mimicking what we see uh, in fights, watching all the great fights, you know, and, and even even the not so great and just just learning from every little aspect there is to learn of the sport. And another thing, too, is um, a lot of our fights were like in um, qualifiers and mm-hmm. national, you know, like we, we just got our feet wet in the, the local shows, you know, maybe first 10, maybe first 10 and before we were already like, you know, this is this is not. You know, we need, we need experience, so let's go to the state tournaments, the regional tournaments, the national. So that's that's where the majority of our fights came from. So having having the love of the sport and then also having a good teacher is is one thing, but you need to tie that together with hard work and discipline. Exactly. And that was the thing that I heard about you two before I ever called your first fight was how hard you guys work in the gym. So talk to me a little bit about that work ethic, that mindset, that discipline, because it shows when you fight. I am I'm so impressed with both you guys from a conditioning standpoint. The con- I love combination punchers, and they seem like they're rare these days. The guys don't throw yeah. combos anymore. Guys who are really fast and explosive, they set the, they set the tone with their jab. They stay at a distance. They don't like to really exchange. But you guys like to get in there and throw combination punches, and uh, that comes with being in, in great condition. So maybe just talk a little bit about your training. Um, from from a, a discipline and, and, and hard work standpoint, please. Um, I mean, when it when it comes to training, it's always been, you know, because my dad my dad um, lifted a lot of weights, you know, growing up. So like his his whole thing was working hard, you know, like and we just trans transitioned that into boxing. And he he pretty much said, you know, if you want something, you you got to be a hundred and ten percent dedicated, and like you, you can't play. So every day when I go in the gym, it's like like okay. You step foot through that front door, and it's it's not play time. You know, there's no time to to say hi to these people or socialize with these people. You walk in the gym like that's that's your life. You know, that's that's where you're gonna create your life. So, you know, it's just it was just it's, it it still is so just molded to that. You know, the, the gym is just not a game. It's not a place to to play or waste time for us. And, and I, I feel like it's something he instilled with us because I mean, when we would go to the gyms with him when we were younger, like we were. 12 13 years old you know and he always told us the second you step into a gym like it's no games it's no jokes so especially as being kids we were like okay like we're not even really allowed to be in gyms like public gyms because we're so young so we put up this we we went in there to work and we understood that this was not a play time or not not an area to to mess around in <laughs> there'd be times we'd go to the gym with him like after like he'd be done working or something and we we pick up like a barbell and like twist it or something and he, he like smack us in the back like hey this is not a place for that you know don't don't play so so he taught so he taught us that and then we took that uh, obviously into boxing and yeah I think that's I think that's something I think that's something that people don't realize being at pro box you, you're in a meat grinder because you're constantly being challenged and there's pressure to 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 not only you know win the fight but just perform and get better and if you're and if you're not like you said, there's that's like like a real family. There's pressure from everyone around you, and if you don't perform, you're gonna hear, you're not only gonna feel what you felt in the ring. You're gonna hear about it afterwards. So there's a there's under there's a tremendous amount of pressure, and you guys are under a microscope. But that's that's the whole point. That's why you guys are where you're at, and that's why you're gonna go to where you're gonna go. And uh, yeah, that's, that's that's, that's the formula right there. I feel like that's just helping us grow. You know, like mm-hmm. like I said, since the beginning, it was it was this isn't a, a um a game. You know, the gym's not a game, so that turns into the fights. You know, like these fights aren't a game. You, you, you fight one fight, a, a guy won in 35. Good job. You won, but like, that's not going to get you to the, yeah, to you, the didn't, you didn't learn level. nothing from it. You didn't, you didn't gain from it whatsoever. That's yeah. We, we don't want that. We want, we want to show people now so they can have the trust in us from, from here to the end of our career that we're, that we're here to win and, and, and perform our best always. Well, Marcus, I know you have a fight coming up, so you can't really enjoy Thanksgiving. Um, how's your how's your training been going for your next fight, November 29th? Pro Box TV, the Wednesday night fight series. Since I started boxing, man, I, I don't think I've had a normal Thanksgiving. I mean, it's, <laughs> people bring Thanksgiving up to me every time I talk about this fight, and I'm like, I forgot Thanksgiving was even coming, you know? Like, I'm just locked into my fight. That's all I That's care about. That's a pro. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not... I'm really not worried about any holidays. I've missed birthdays, um, Christmas, you know, like all, all kinds of stuff. But that's that's just another day, you know, my career and my future is not going to depend on having turkey one night of the year, you know? Have a social life when you got one of those. 
when you What's got that? one of those when you got one of those exactly. belts around your waist. That's that's exactly. when you can have a social life. <laughs> exactly what I'm talking about. Well, I think guys, we've been talking to some future champions here, and you know, um, being a longtime boxing fan, I think about HBO had Boxing After Dark, Showtime had Showbox, and now boxing fans have Pro Box TV, where you get to see these rising up and coming stars, the future of tomorrow in boxing. Uh, gentlemen, thank you, and cannot wait to see you fight again. Thank you so thank much. You. We appreciate it. In the co-main, we got a good one. Welterweights, Christian Baez and Tariq Zayna. Those are welterweights. That's the co-main event on November 29th. And guys, the, the main event, I mean, what more can you say? I mean, Chris, you say it all the time. We have more than one main event on these cards. It, it That's just how it works out. And uh, the main event is going to be a good one. Orlando Gonzalez and Jorge Castaneda, a couple of 130 pounders. Gonzalez has been in with some good guys, Paulie. He's got some experience. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, he's got a, we typically don't bring on guys who at least who have just padded records. I mean, for the most part, some of our main events tend to be guys who are just below the world-class level, just below the championship level. And we match them against each other. That's kind of our motto, right? Good fighters and great fights. They, they're they trying to be great, but they're in great fights. And that's the only reason we bring them here. Uh, so they're typically good, exciting styles, but also they tend a lot of times not to be undefeated because they are guys who have tested their record. They've stepped up, you know, they've even got some wins, but they'll also get beat uh, by the, by their step up opposition. So they're right there, but they're used to stepping up. So when they step up against one another on our network, it's not something that's always new for them. You know, it's, it's typically uh, something they're used to. So they get right in there and get uh, down and dirty. And Gonzalez is one of those guys, you know, he's uh, uh, I believe he's about 16 and two, his record, right. And uh, mm -hmm. 16 you know, and two. He, he's uh he's got some good wins. He's got a competitive, losses uh but he's not uh one of those guys that's petting his record yeah uh castaneda he's he's a tough guy he's an upset-minded guy he beat the very highly touted otha jones the third uh gave him his first loss he was a guy who was a really big amateur came out i think he was signed right away to match room um there was a lot of a lot of hype behind him and, and castaneda beat him and castaneda yeah a couple fights ago had a, a a shootout that did not end his way when he fought um eduardo gonzalez who just had uh hernandez excuse me uh eduardo hernandez who just had an incredible fight with Oshaki Foster, that he was ahead on all scorecards going into the last round, or two to three scorecards, and then got knocked out. So I mean, he's got his losses. Uh, he's got a, uh, some losses on his record, but he's fought some some stiff competition. And those are the kind of guys we always get here. And we've had Orlando Gonzalez on our air before. He's a super exciting fight. He had an incredible fight with Susana last time out. So he's looking to keep that momentum going. He's going to be a third time pro box uh, 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 a participant, which is. I mean, I tip my hat to any pro box guys who fight more than once because our fights are really, really tough. There's no easy fights on our air. So anyone who's willing to come back knows that you're stepping into the meat grinder. And uh, Gonzalez is ready to do it once again. And he's got a stiff challenger in front of him. Like on looking at records, you're going to lean towards uh, Gonzalez, but don't sleep on a guy like Castaneda. He's coming off knocking out an undefeated fighter his last fight, which he rebounded from that first round knockout loss. So uh, yeah, he, he, he's a live dog and he's got a lot to prove. And both these guys do. When guys come to these events and they come to Pro Box, they know that they have a massive platform against stiff competition, and there's an opportunity for them to get shown to the world. So they bring their best each time, each and every time, which is why our fights are always so good. We had a chance to sit down with Gonzalez and Castaneda. Let's hear what they had to say. I'm George Jakovic alongside the champion, Pauli Malaji. Pauli, we're talking about November 29th, the main event, Pro Box TV, the Wednesday Night Fight Series. We got the main event fighters in the house with us today, Orlando Gonzalez and Jorge Castaneda. Paulie, these guys are going to put on a good fight. Give me your quick uh, quick synopsis of the fight, and then we're going to hear from the fighters. You know what? Two hungry guys, two guys who are uh, right at that cusp where, you know, uh, you want to be. When And a lot of times when you're at this point in your career, uh, you end up taking each other on, guys in similar positions. And that's sort of the the stepping stone right there to kind of put you in that position that you need to be. You know, I think when guys are hovering around this area, they can almost taste it. And I think these guys are at a position in their career where they can almost taste it and they're right there. And I, and I think they look at each other's records, they look at each other's resumes and they say, you know what, this, I need to win against a guy like this in order to put me over this hump that I'm trying to get over, the, over, over put me over this position and put me in the position for the way the bigger names start paying attention to me and I start coming into the conversation. So I think this fight is uh, important for both guys. And that's 
that's what we do here on Pro Box TV. You know, we try to match up two guys like this who are in this kind of position a lot of times, guys who are just below that, that level where everybody wants to get to and hopefully a win and get over one another, especially in impressive fashion, makes people click right onto them. Orlando, I'll start with you. Tell me about this fight and how important it is. I mean, 130 pounds, you got some good fighters in that division, and a win by wh whoever wins this fight is going to be in a great position moving forward. So, Orlando, tell me about uh, fight night. What's what, what are you expecting? Hey, what's up, guy? First, um, first I want to say that my English is not very good looking, but I'm going to try myself. I think so. my, my, my English is like... like um, Pau uh, Spanish. I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> Gracias. So I, I'm really happy for this opportunity. Um, my second time with Provox TV. I, I really like your content, guys. Um, 50 50 fights. And I really appreciate it, the opportunity that you give me in this kind of event. My second main event in my whole career against a guy like Jorge Castañeda, who I know he's, I know he's a good fighter too. And I'm really happy and to be back in Florida too. We have many pro weekends out there, ready to see me fight again. And I I'm ready, I I'm really happy. Jorge, what about you? I know you've been in the ring with some, some really good fighters. Um, what kind of opportunity is this on November 29th? Well, I'm really happy as well to fight for pro box for my first time against Orlando Gonzalez. He's a really good fighter. I've seen his fights and you know, I'm just motivated I'm, I'm, I'm hungry to, to get in there and, and get the, the fans a great fight. It's going to be a war, man. Mexico versus Puerto Rico, you know. Mm. Um, you know, I know he's training hard. I'm, I'm training hard as well. My coach is pushing me to my limit, so we're going to be ready for fight night. You're going to expect fireworks for this fight. Hey, Pauly, you know, the, these these main events, just these fight cards on Pro Box, I mean, it's it's guaranteed action and and. Pauly, I, I think we're going to get the same thing from these two guys. Well, that's the thing. I mean, we also have a, a good crowd that's sort of becoming almost a uh, repetitious crowd. People know here in, uh, in Plant City that the we have these fights every two Wednesdays, and they tend to live up to the expectation. And we pick certain fighters, ma match them up against one another on purpose because you know, we know they're going to have fan-friendly styles and they're going to come to win. And I, you know, that's what I, I expect out of both guys. Um, as far as the southpaw versus right-hander matchup, obviously for the southpaw, it's a little bit uh, easier easier because he's always dealing with right-handers but uh how do what is the adjustment to make against the southpaw um you know just training hard we've been sparring uh southpaws and you know try to uh stay close to him because i know uh, i've seen his videos his fights he, he uh tends to back up a little bit sometimes try to box a little bit so you know i'm uh, just trying to, to adjust those things and, and sparring and, you know, listen to my, my corner and, you know, do the, the right adjustments to fight uh, Southpaw. And Jorge, you know, uh, Orlando said that there's a lot of Puerto Ricans here in, in this area of Florida. Uh, ha has that come into play in your mind? Uh, uh, and, and what, how does that uh, affect your mentality going into the fight, if, if it does at all? Oh, it doesn't affect my mentality at all, man. It just motivates me more because I know he's, I'm going to be, you know, in front of, uh, his crowd so you know it's motivation for me to to give a great fight and you know come out victorious uh fight night you know I mean, what I, I, I thought, if, uh, if it's any consolation a lot of puerto ricans in orlando but a lot of mexicans in plant city so it's uh this is also another reason why this fight is so good uh and it will be fan friendly hey, so orlando um we're gonna wrap this up but tell me why you're gonna win this fight oh well why because i want to be in the mix again in the 130 pounds um, I only have on um, um, four fights in the 130 pounds, and I know a win over Castaneda is gonna put me on the mix. And um, in a division like you said before, it's a good division, really good fighter, really, really good champions. But maybe in a few months, everything is gonna move, you know, move a little bit because some fighters are looking um, forward to go up on weight. Some someone is gonna stay. So anyway, I, I'm really. Focus right now in the fight that I have in, the, in my front on Castaneda. I already am um, training really hard, making man and Justin. We we look forward to good good sparrings, and you know the, I, I want to win this fight. I want to win all my fight, but this this one especially because it, it's gonna put me on the mix again in the 130 30 pounds contender. Or hey, what about you? Why are you gonna win this fight? 
Well, I mean, I got uh, nothing to lose and everything to win coming in in this fight. So, you know, I'm, I'm training really hard. I'm motivated. I'm doing this for my family, for my hometown of Laredo, Texas. You know, every, every person that believes in me, it's going to see that I'm, you know, the training that I've been putting in is going to be worth it. And, you know, I'm just ready to give a good fight with uh, Orlando Gonzalez. And, you know, the people's going to win in this fight. Mm, well, by the people, Paulie, that means us. And, Paulie, you'll be calling the fight. It should be a great one. Man, November 29th, can't wait. Orlando Gonzalez against Jorge Castaneda. Ten rounds, 130-pound fighters. The winner of this fight is going to have something big in the in their future. Make sure you download the app. Don't miss this fight Wednesday, November 29th, 8 p.m. Make sure you tune in. Download the app. Go on YouTube. Good fighters in great fights. Chris. Paulie, you guys are going to be calling the fights 8 o'clock. You're going to be looking good. You'll have your suit and tie on, sometimes without a tie. But um, always ex exciting seeing, hearing you guys behind the mic, and, and it promises Paulie to be another great card. Yeah, yeah. We're, I mean, it's been an exciting year uh, with ProBox TV. What we've gotten, we've launched this consistent uh, Wednesday night fight series to the point where now uh, more and more people are understanding it, tuning in, looking forward to it. And uh, I, I love uh, working with the guys uh, on these fights. It's never a bad night. Uh, it, there's no, the, the night doesn't drag because the fighters, the fights always tend to be good. And uh, this is nothing uh, less on November 29th. Yeah, I always say I have my dream job. I get to call fights. I get the best seat in the house. You guys have to listen to what I have to say. But it got better when I got the product TV because every fight's good. I never have, a, have an issue with having a boring fight because we don't we don't do those. All of our fights are good. And the past couple months has been, I mean, it's been stellar. Every 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 two weeks has been better than the week before. Um, and the bar was set high to begin with. Plus, I get to work with guys like Paul Amanaji and Mike Goldberg on air. And it just it just makes my job that much easier. But at, to the end of the day, it's all about the fighters, and the fighters come to fight, and that's that's what the sport's all about, and that's why I love my job so much. Well, eight o'clock, it is going down live on Pro Box TV. Again, make sure you download the app, go on YouTube, check it out. The app is free; you don't pay any money. The app is free. Free fights, great fights that are free. Make sure you check it out eight o'clock tonight, and don't forget, Pro Box TV is your boxing channel. Phoenix, Arizona, 10-0, Farid Goga. Co 
main event scheduled for 10 in the welterweight division. Owner of 37 professional wins, the 37-year-old from Argentina, Marcelino Nicholas Lopez, comes in on short notice to face 12-0-1 Tarek Zainan, born in Morocco, educated in the UK, and boxing out of Eric Morales' gym in TJ, Mexico. Our main event, 10 rounds for the WBA, Continental North America Super Featherweight Belt, 21-2 Puerto Rican Orlando Gonzalez, who back in June right here on Pro Box TV battled Romero Sassena for 10 rounds in what is arguably our fight of the year. His opponent, Mexican-American Jorge Castaneda, whose last four opponents have had a combined record of 58, 1, and 2. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg, of course, joined by my powerful partners, the Magic Man, the former two-time world champion, Pauli Malinaji, former world champion, Chris Algieri. Man, was that a fun night in Kissimmee, Florida, watching Orlando Gonzalez in Romero Sassena. Man, that was dynamite. It's, that was one of the fights of the year, if you haven't seen it. I mean, that was one of the better fights you'll see ever. What was it about Gonzalez that impressed you then and you expect tonight, Pauli? Um, the consistency. You know, there was moments in the, in the fight for both guys. It was one of those fights where you, at the end of it, you were really wondering who's going to get the decision. Yeah. It was that competitive. It was that lights out. And I like the fact that Gonzalez doesn't break, doesn't wither under the stress of a tough fight. You know, obviously, he's a very good technical fighter. Um, you know, you you look at him boxing, and you, he, gives you the, he gives you the impression that he's just technical. But you know what? If it goes into the trenches, he is able to handle that and can give you an exciting fight. Has a loss against Rebasi Ramirez, who is a, a current world champion. So he's looking to edge himself just a little closer to that level. He's come up short against that level, but he's on his way back up. He told us, uh, Chris, before the fight in Kissimmee that he learned a lot from that experience against Ramirez. His opponent tonight is also experienced in... He's a great now in Marcos Cajero, who, of course, is well known for his time with Chaco Latito. Yeah, a great mentor who really backs him. See, yeah. see some good potential in him. He's been in tough throughout his entire career. He always comes in dog shape. We had it. We interviewed him last week. I mean, the, the kid's stone cold. He's ready to go. He said it best. I have nothing to lose, everything to gain. And that's the way that he fights. He leaves it all in the line. It's exactly why he's here on Pro Box TV, and he comes to win. That's what we love here. Exactly. That's what we love. If that's the way he fights, could we see a gonzalez Sassena type battle in Armenia? Oh, man, I hope so, because that fight was so fun to call. It was fun to call. And the one thing that I really took into is, much like Chris said, how much Marcos does believe in his young fighter second time they've been together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, you don't, you don't get make that marriage if you don't have that belief right. in each other, right? So that's the way it's going to work, first and foremost, in order to develop a chemistry. They're developing it nicely. We'll see how they progress tonight. Yeah, I did okay with uh, Chocolatito. Um, Chocolatito <laughs> gave uh, Marcos his <laughs> own belt and, uh, yeah, very well story two men who train under marcos are on the card tonight four great fights for you on a wednesday night on your boxing channel pro box tv and the one thing that i like about our starter is that argy lagos and lopez eight rounds in the bantamweight division both come in and they both talk about how excited they are chris to be here on pro box tv this is this is a perfect opener for this this guy because you look at the fight and it's like oh record wise you you're gonna you're gonna lean towards one guy, but you can't do that here. Right. Everybody here can fight, and we match them up. Our matchmakers do a brilliant job each and every Wednesday night that we have these fights, and they've done it again tonight. I expect the opener to be fireworks. We have had an incredible year, Paulie. It's just gonna go up in our last two shows. You know what, dude? I mean, if you've been a loyal subscriber to Pro Box TV and you're here with us every on on every other Wednesday night, you know that our B sides are just A sides in disguise. <laughs> yeah. sides. You know what I'm saying? I mean, really, they they just have a uh, they've got they've run into a couple of hiccups maybe here and there. But they're not really your typical B-sides. They don't really believe in that themselves. They're like, B-side? What B-side? I'm here to win. Yeah, we believe in uh, an A-side and the other A-side. And as promised, we will get things started in the bantamweight division. Our tale of the tape for our first fight of the night on your boxing channel. Ioannis Argilagos. 
He's fighting out of Brooklyn, or he's fighting out of Las Vegas. His opponent, Jose Lopez, fighting out of Brooklyn. Just one year difference. Reach is virtually identical. This should be a great way to start our night. Eight rounds in the Bantam weight division. Now fighting out of Las Vegas, now fighting out of Brooklyn, and with the official introductions, Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for eight rounds in the bantamweight division. Your judges for this contest, Rodolfo Aguilar, Tito Wilgo, and Brian Gary. Your referee in charge is Massimo Montanini. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the purple, white, and gold. He weighed in at 116 pounds with a record of four wins, two losses, and two draws from Brooklyn, New York. Please welcome Jose Selfmade Lopez. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the green with yellow, he weighed in at 117 pounds. His record, nine wins, one loss, with four wins by knockout from Las Vegas, Nevada. He is Johnny's El Pequeño Gigante Aguilagos. Eight-rounder in the bantamweight division. Ready? Okay. Respect each other. We respect the rules. Okay? Touch them up. When I say stop, it's stop. Okay? Okay. Good. Good luck. Good luck. Corner. Thank you, sir. Argy Lagos and Lopez. Set to get things started here on a Wednesday night on your boxing channel. It's time to fight. Purple, white, and gold trunks for Jose Self-Made Lopez. And the little giant, born in Cuba, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, in the green and yellow, Ioannis Arguilagos. In talking to Arguilagos in the fighter meetings, he was very humble, his trainer did say coach flick as they call him he did say he is very fast and very explosive he just saw him try a couple of good counter shots tried one over the top of the jab and now he's tried that little left hook on the side of it as well but lopez looks like he's here to fight too as well guys i mean trying to get underneath of that body shots yeah i've seen lopez in the past he, he can fight man don't don't let that record fool you even though he's four and two he can he's really got the goods and a trainer we have seen here before with other fighters as well, Francisco Chico Guzman in the corner of Jose Lopez. Yeah, and Guzman's guys, they come to fight. He, does, he, he will take nothing less. You got that right. First round scheduled for eight. Good body work there from Lopez as he pinned Argilagos along, uh, along the ropes. First time both of these men have been scheduled for eight rounds. Looking to get us started in style. He looks like, looks like Lopez is trying to target that body a lot, right, Jim? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's got a real quick guy in front of him. You see the quick, the quickness and the speed from Argilagos and, and Lopez, like you said, he's really targeting that body down low, jabbing low, hooking on both sides. I think that's a smart move early on. Nice counter attempt there with that up jab by Argilagos. Argilagos. Check that back in 2021. Did have an eight rounder that went the distance. He was victorious against Meza. Nine and one against four, two, and two. 25 year old against 26 year old. First fight of 2023 for Argy Lagos. And it's almost over 2023. So. Yes. <laughs> He's been inactive. He said it's just been a, a tough year, Paul. He couldn't find a fight was on some big platforms, but very thankful to be here tonight on Pro Box TV. And you can see Archilagos is trying to set up that left hook. He's trying to hook off that jab, and he, moments ago, he tried to trade left hooks with Lopez, got the better of it. There it is again. Archilagos 
an Olympic bronze medalist in the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro. Lopez with busy hands late. Nice knuckle punch there with the right hand. He threw a kind of an inverted right hand to stick those knuckles under the ribs. Good shot from Lopez. Keep it, keep it, keep it close in. Touch the body, all right? Let's go. Move body shot. Get to him. Get to him, all right? Get to him. Do your thing. You got to get close in. Corner low pass. Can you know because he's trying to come with a, with a straight hook and stuff like that. I'm trying to catch you with his fastness, all right? Let's go. Chico Guzman. And Coach yes. Flick in the corner of Argy Lagos. Hey there. Hey there. Guzman wanting more body work because they want to slow down that speed of Argy Lagos. Any more body work after that first round, he's going to throw only body punches. I mean, he was <laughs> prolific to the body in that first round, Lopez was. And Lopez, interestingly, in the fighter meeting yesterday, said he believes his most dangerous weapon is his footwork, is his movement. So let's keep an eye on that. Interesting. You don't usually get a guy to to bring that up. It's usually the hook or the well, uppercut or something, uh -huh. but he just floats, Chris, is what he told yeah, us. Yeah, well, now we just saw that. He did a nice little cut angle angle. On Aguilagos, which I would expect from the the, the, the Olympian, not yeah. <laughs> not the four two and two fighter. Growing up, he was back and forth from Mexico to New York, basically raised in the United States since age nine. Both parents from Mexico. That is Jose Lopez. And Guzman wants him to stay low when he gets close, kind of close range, said just so he doesn't get caught with that speedy left hook. And that's, you can see, that's something Argy Lagos has tried and even had some mild success with, is that hooking shot when Lopez tries to close that gap. Uh-huh. Nietzsche Banquez, the only loss on the ledger of Argy Lagos. He said, quite simply, it was a bad day, it was a bad night, I had some stomach problems. That is in my rear view mirror. Bank was an ex-IBO world champion. Yeah. And not a not a bad loss for you, especially when you got less than a tempo fights, which at the time I think he did. He did indeed. He did indeed. Lopez is trying to give Aguilago stomach problems tonight by blasting <laughs> right hands and left hooks just like that. A moment ago, uh, Aguilago landed a really nice left hook upstairs. Like you said, Chico wanted him to stay low. Lopez a little too high, got caught hooking with the hooker. Yeah, and that's the thing, sometimes when you're in close, getting those shots off, you, you have a tendency to want it to come up. You gotta keep your center of gravity low while getting those shots off. Aguilagos switching to the southpaw stance. Minute remaining here in round number two. Pro Box TV, 24-7, 365. We are your boxing channel. High, low. From Jose Lopez. Yes, that footwork you were talking about. Before. Yep. Mm, nice overhand shot there from Lopez. Lopez coming back down this fight at 116. Last time he was. At 116 or so was the third professional fight of his career, September of 2019. And looking to finish strong here in round number two. Yeah, Lopez doing a good job building off of what he did in round number one. But Aguilagos landed some good shots this round as well. Aguilagos with the sharp shots, Lopez with the activity. Interesting round. Activity and physicality from Lopez.
Getting set for round number three, our first fight of the night. You guys broke it down a moment ago, and now we see it on the replay. You see Lopez touching with that jab, keeping that distance. He was able to set up good body shots, work his way in behind that jab. In that last round, he added the overhand right, which landed a nice shot around the gloves of Aguilagos. Let's see if he can build off the work he did in round one and two. Aguilagos started training in 2007 at the age of nine. He liked learning the technique and getting faster. He's in the green and yellow, purple, white, and gold for the ultra-aggressive Jose Selfmade Lopez. And if Chico Guzman says go to the body, Jose listens and goes to the body. Man, I told you guys in the open, watch out for Lopez. This guy comes prepared. He's got a, he's got a deceiving record. He can fight. Yeah, and he's got, and, and Aguilagos has the flashier shots. He tries to punch in between you, but the more consistency is with Lopez, which makes these rounds a little bit difficult to score. And I think Aguilagos tries to land those shots and maybe used to having his opponents leave him alone when he punches in between them, but it doesn't look like Lopez is going to cooperate with that. So Aguilagos may need to get more active. Yeah, the activity and the eagerness of Lopez has really given Aguilagos trouble. Like you said, Champ, those pot shots, those, those quick counters here and there, it's just not enough for me. I, I like the consistent work from Lopez. He's making the fight. Aguilagos, born in Cuba, made his way to the United States in 2018. Much like former heavyweight interim world champion Luis King Kong Ortiz. Fought for the world championship twice, lost to Deontay Wilder on both occasions. Good sharp work from Aguilagos as Lopez trying to put more pressure, not being as effective as he has been, but Aguilagos learned some really clean shots, right hands and left hooks. Aguilagos said his idol in Cuba was the stylish southpaw Yasnia Toledo, two-time Olympian, 2012 bronze medalist in London, who lost in the semifinals to Vasily Lomachenko. The issue with Aguilagos is he's sharp, but he doesn't lead there. He goes, he does the lead there, but for the most part, he's waiting on Lopez's work and then trying to work off of Lopez's work. And he doesn't do a bad job of it. It's just, at times, you'd like to see him taking the initiative and lead himself. Yeah, Aguilagos is definitely landing the cleaner shots, but Lopez is out hustling. Five seconds, round number three. Self-made Jose Lopez said, I've been a fighter my entire life. My entire life has been a fight. Raised by a single mother, he is the middle of five children. He's tried to do everything he can for his family to help out, look after his siblings, works full time to support his son and daughter. Quick uppercut. It's the kind of fight, like, if you're judging, it's like, what do you like? Those sharp yeah. encounters from Aguilagos, you like the activity of Lopez. Because it seems like both men are happy to do what they're doing. They both, I feel like both guys feel like they're winning. Yeah, but you know what? Luckily, Jim, we got eight rounds to try to see if we can get any separation point. right now. Point. Right now, it's difficult. See the respect between these two yep. after that round. Aguilagos will see if he should respect them or not. And then he's like, all right, I'll give you respect. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to walk that shit, man. They got high guard. The sh sharp counters on the inside by Aguilagos. He's, he's very adept at punching him between you, champ. Yeah, that's where he's been the most sharp. And like I said, he's been, especially that last round, he landed the cleaner, harder shots. But what do you like? Do you like the activity or like those clean, big shots? Yeah, and also the body shots, which sometimes go unnoticed. Um, yes, Lopez doing a lot of great body work. Great point. Round number four, the Cuban fighting out of Las Vegas. Ioannis Arguilagos, green and yellow trunks. The Mexican fighting out of Brooklyn, New York, Jose Lopez, purple, white, and gold. Let's see who really starts to take command if one or the other can do so here in round number four. 
think down the stretch this fight's going to get very interesting. It's going to come down to conditioning, will, heart. Because both these guys are still very competitive, very eager at this point. It was nice little uppercut a few seconds ago by Lopez. He's starting to at least get up, get low enough to get away from those punches on the inside. The returns of Aguilago there weren't as sharp or weren't as cleanly landed or even landed, for example. There's a good jab, though, from Aguilagos. Lopez Pauli, as both of you guys well know, fighting out of Brooklyn. Chico Guzman was in the corner of Cesar Francis on multiple occasions here on Pro Box TV. He may have had the top knockout of 2022. And our main event features Orlando Gonzalez, who thus far arguably was in the fight of the year against Romero Cesena, as we mentioned in the open of the show. Midway point around four. Ooh, good Quick chance. Hand. Chopping right hand from Aguilagos. One of the best, that's probably the best fight, uh, punch of the fight tonight. And that's one thing about Lopez, if you can criticize something, it's he's a little bit too predictable. He goes right to you and he throws punches. He doesn't faint at you. He doesn't disguise it at all. He's gonna go right to you and throw. So it makes Aguilagos' life easier when he's trying to punch in between. Good counter hooks on the inside from Aguilagos again. That's See? that speed and explosiveness, Chris, we talked about earlier. It's also the class, you know? We're, we're looking at an Olympian here. This guy is, you bronze know, medalist. bronze medalist. That's a big deal. You know, he has a loss on his record. Sure, he got stopped, but like you said, champion fought a very good fight early in his career. But now you're starting to see the class of Aguilagos starting to, starting to come through. Also a two-time world amateur champion on the front side and the back side of his Olympic appearance. Last fight was 348 days ago. It was a four round fight. He said in, it was crickets, but I kept my spirits up. I stayed in the gym and I'm looking to take it out of my opponent tonight. Lopez needs to be careful with that head. I, I like the physicality in the inside, but it can't be so obvious putting your forehead hard against your opponents like that. And so many of our fighters here on Pro Box TV have been in tough. Last two opponents for Argy Lagos, combined record of 29, four and one. Good flurry late in the round by both men. Good round. Argy Lagos starting to feel it. Sharp work from Aguilagos this round. This is what we're talking about. Those, those counter shots on the inside, which are few and far between in the first couple of rounds, have been more consistent these last couple of rounds. That was the best round so far for Aguilagos. And what did Guzman tell him? When he's inside, get low, man, so you don't get hit with those counter hooks. He knows, he knows that Aguilagos is looking to come back with those countering left hooks. He's got a good coach in the corner to see if he listens. Now you got, now you got, now you got, now you got the machete jab. You off your back foot, all right? Off your back foot, let's go. One year ago, Jose Lopez fought on the undercard of Terrence Crawford's fight. You remember that night very well, don't you, Paulie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> story for another time. Inside story. Inside story. <laughs> Round number five. Unforgettable name. <laughs> there you go. For everyone at home, I'm out of the loop as well. Don't 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 feel uh, <laughs> don't feel like it's an inside joke, but just echo with just us. <laughs> it's just us being us. Yeah. Yeah. My powerful partners, the two-time world champion, the magic man, Paul Molinaji, former world champion Chris Algieri, Mike Goldberg, Wednesday night fights. Here at Pro Box TV, round five of our opener. Argilago started to come on a bit more in round four, but now Lopez with that chopping style, body head, uh -huh, uh -huh. looking to control the ring on, baby. and bully a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Lopez is effective, he's tough, but like, it's the same gear. Right. Yeah. And Aguilagos has different different modes, and you're seeing that, and, and, and like you said, Jim, we got an eight-round fight, and the cream rises to the top the more rounds we got. And the issue with Aguilagos is that, you know, sometimes he lets himself get out working, but when he gets his hands going, you can see he's, like you said, the cream rises to the top. It's just he risks at times to allow himself to be sort of buried in work, and then his own sharp shots don't get appreciated. 
as we're at the midway point of round number five, is it time for Lagos to turn up the tempo? Absolutely. I mean, he did last round. Here, Lopez is trying to get it back. Really putting that pressure on. And like you said, Chan, Aguilagos allowing him to work up just a little too much for my liking. Yeah, and Lopez is his best, his best uh, quality is his footwork, but it's at the same gear all the time. So I don't know. You know, like he, he, on his way in, he's going to go in and he's going to punch. And Aguilagos knows that. I mean, he says it's his footwork. I'm, I'm not sure I'm yeah. seeing yeah. <laughs> that be, be his best asset. I'm looking at his doggedness and his, his consistency. But yeah, he's, he's going to go right to Aguilagos and he's going to punch. Hey, hey, oh. oh. That was close, though, man. I would like to see that again. That looked like it was on the belt line. We're going to do it right now. Here we go. Look at that. Look at that. The guys in the truck. See, the guys in the truck are right on it. And that oh, was low. That was low. And those are the ones that hurt. Yeah. Those are the ones on the corner of the cup that come up and under. That, 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 that hurt. And you saw Aguilagos. He went right down. It wasn't, it wasn't a delayed shot at all. Ooh. Oh, now Aguilagos comes out of those quick hands. But Lopez continues to pressure. Lopez also smothers himself, too. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yep. He doesn't give himself a chance to give, give the honest work. Argilagos is more cognizant of his range a little bit better. Good right hand by Argilagos. <laughs> the corner of Lopez says, this is Pro Box, we fight here. <laughs> Yelling at his guy, that's great. Oh, they got it right. They did indeed. Chico Guzman knows that. Yeah, he's a, he's a veteran of this of this ring here. Absolutely, and uh, it's always great when he brings one of his talented fighters in. Oh, well, Lopez's fighters always fight. Whether, uh, yeah. whether uh, Guzman's fighters, Gu Guzman's fighters always win, whether one or the other. in between that Aguilagos uses against Lopez. He kind of knows what Lopez is going to do. He kind of he likes to catch and shoot. He's been using that a lot and punching well in between a lot of what Lopez has been trying to do. Yeah, but it looks like every replay we get is the same going over and over again. It yeah. seems yeah. like it because that's what's going on in the fight. Lopez has not switched gears. He's not figured out how to get away from those counters on the inside. Constant pressure from Lopez, maybe at the same speed, may look virtually identical each round, but he is the busier fighter. The thing about Aguilagos is a little troubling, though. He never looks to really take command of the fight either. Right. You know, he's, he kind of just goes through the gears, but he doesn't. He never actually comes out centering and say, you know, I'm going to take him full control of this ring. He works off of what Thank Lopez gives him, and Lopez gives Thank him plenty of chances to work, and he punches well in between. And at times, he even allows himself to be outworked by Lopez, which is risky. You never see that that sort of mean streak where he's like, I'm going to take control of this fight. Yeah, I'm going to be the boss. You don't see him trying to step, you know, draw that line in the sand. And that's tough because when the decision comes yeah. and if it doesn't go your way, you're looking around like, hey, what happened? It's like, well, you let your man work. And, and also, it's something you need if you're going to go up, up the ladder. Good body shot from Lopez there. Good uppercut from Aguilagos. We saw that sense of urgency for just a moment after the low shot. I think that body shot affected him. Yeah, Aguilagos hurt with a body shot at the man was. Lopez is getting off some good shots, even a couple of good uppercuts. If you want to take away speed and movement, if you want to take away explosiveness, you just stay in the face of your opponent. That's what Jose Lopez has done. And bang that rib cage. That, you got that right. That'll, that'll sap that, that battery real quick. Ooh, there is another one right down the middle. Nice shuttle punch there with the left hand from Lopez. A lot of room in this ring, but Lopez doesn't want to use much of it. Can you imagine if Lopez knew how to leverage his shots by understanding his range? Yeah. Instead of not smothering himself. Good upper there by Lopez. Nice counter combination by Aguilagos. Uppercut. Again, looking to go to the body of the bronze medalist. Answer by Aguilagos. Lopez having a good round, though, man. Mm -hmm. Great round. Keeping up a nice pace. Yeah. 
his conditioning looks fantastic. I know he dropped the weight class. He looks very lean. He's big for the weight class. Definitely in good shape. Chico Guzman said he always comes to the gym, gives 100%. He learns everything needed to battle tough fighters. And he's in there against an Olympic bronze medalist tonight. 40 seconds left in the sixth. Hey, hey, be careful. Be careful your back. First career eight-rounder for Lopez. First eight-rounder in a while from Lagos, who just landed the uppercut. Good lead uppercut there from Lagos. Popped the head up of Lopez. S stemmed, stemmed the tide for a moment, but Lopez right back to work. Yep, including with his head. Yep. Nice little shots there by Lopez in there. Again, he's back to work. Yeah, Paul, you said if he could get that leverage, it seems like he's always leaning on his opponent. Is Lopez. If he could really just sit back a little bit, he would generate a lot more power. Good job, good job, good job. Man. Put some Vaseline on. Give me anguish. How you feeling? All right? You feel like a champ? Let's go. Well, we got to push these last two rounds. Make it the hottest two rounds. Let's get out of here with a W. Okay? We fight for the, your family. Come on, man. Okay? There's a replay there. Good body shot. And a counter uppercut by Aguilagos. See, good body shots there on the counter uppercut. That's kind of the story. I mean, yep. Lopez leads. He may land some decent shots. He may get blocked. And then Aguilagos lands in between a little bit cleaner. Yeah, we were talking about the leverage positioning of, of Lopez. And that's where Aguilagos has found a home for that uppercut because Lopez is leaning forward over that front foot. The uppercut is the shot. I like how both corners used uh, the motivation of fight for your family. Yes, Aguilago's corner in Spanish and uh, Lopez's corner in English. <laughs> well, as I mentioned earlier, Lopez, the middle of five kids raised by a single mother, works a full-time construction job to take care of his kids. Chico Guzman said he's a great dad. And he's in the seventh round for the first time in his professional career. And still putting on a good pace. Yeah, I was going to say, first time in the, in the seventh round, but man, he's the one leading the charge in terms of pace and output. See, Argyllago is a times hold, but Argyllago is real sneaky. He knows how to hold on the opposite side, so he doesn't get a warning. He's only got one warning tonight, but he's there's been a few times where he's been holding very clearly. He's been doing a lot of real savvy moves in there tonight, yeah. is Argyllago. And when you got that much amateur experience, you got you know the little tricks. 77 amateur fights, two world amateur championships, and a bronze medal. Only 77? Only 77. Wow. He got his money's worth. I mean, he did two it. amateur championships and a bronze medal. Yeah. You're getting a lot of quality in those 77 amateur fights. That is very impressive. You see, he holds again on the opposite side. You see? Yep, yep, he got, yep, the hand got that arm tied up. We see the little things, the technique, yeah. the experience from Argy Lagos, but is it enough to leave a big impression in the minds of the judges? You know, I, I was just going to say that, Goldie. I, a, lot of the, a lot of the smooth, savvy things you're doing, they're not scorable techniques. Right. You know, holding on that side, you know, getting yourself in position, not getting hit with these kind of shots, but is it going to be enough work getting done? But that's the thing, though. Some jump judges don't really know how to score. They just score for who's going or who's giving the pressure. So, so if you had those kind of judges, then, you know, they, they are going to give it to, to Lopez. Honestly, that was a worry of my career and why I changed my style in the last third of my career because I knew a lot of judges didn't know the things I was doing. Right. And, Paulie, if I said something that Chris was about to say, mm -hmm. I am finally learning a little something. <laughs> no, Colby, you're, doing, you're, you're the man. You're the man. You got it. These two guys are the man, man. You put it on right here, pro box style, center ring, phone booth style fight the whole time. There was a reason we mentioned this at the open. Yeah. This was, we knew this was going to be a good fight. They're going to leave it all in there. Let's see if Argy Lagos. You see he was holding there. You see again? Yep. Looks to, <laughs> looks to utilize 
some of that speed and explosiveness mm. right there, right now. Ooh. Ernie Lagos is getting fired up, finally. I'm telling you, I don't care how this fight ends, both these guys are gonna think they won. And it, yeah, because again, a lot of times even the body work of a guy like Lopez goes underappreciated, you know? But yet, Artie Lagos also has a lot of eye-catching shots in, uh, himself, so... It's tough. It's one of those things, man. It's, this is what you like. And it's like you said, neither one of them has asserted themselves as the boss in the ring tonight. So it's going to be really difficult to declare to each other who the man is. The ring girl almost went down there. You saw that? I saw that. She, she caught herself well. Tripped over the feet of one of the cornermen of... Uh, but it would have been a Aki slip, Lagos. not an eight count, right? Yeah. It depends whose camp you're in. Aki <laughs> <laughs> Lagos, the trainer's looking back like, who just, who just hit my leg? <laughs> She's got about 18-inch heels on. That's yeah. pretty impressive to recover from. Now they're talking eighth and final round. Three minutes remain. Nine and one. Yolani Sergi Lagos. Green and yellow trunks, busy hands from Jose Lopez. Look at these two. This is awesome. You know, when you get, the, you get the final instructions before the last round, they go win the fight. You know, both of those guys got that instruction. Yep. Yep. <laughs> they both got the riot act in the corner. Do it for your family. This is it, son. <laughs> Guzman asked for angles on the inside from Lopez, and Lopez has done a good job of doing that sidestep a lot of times. And Argy Lagos with Nicole, his daughter's name, on the back of his trunks looking to do it for his family. Oh, man. Oh, oh. Right hand. good hook there by Lopez. Oh, oh right hand by Lagos. Lagos. Tit for tat between these two. Back and forth action, seesaw all night long. Oh. How Robot else can they finish it? Yeah, exactly. These guys knew what they signed up for. Woo! Sticking his tongue out at, at the opposing corner. It's not over yet, homeboy. <laughs> Just the second in a row. And that's the thing. He's, it's for too Argy predictable Lagos. for Lopez. He's going to yeah. get broken. He's going to walk right back in. And Lagi Lagos knows he can time him with a shot. Lagi Lagos sticking his tongue out at the corner. Yeah, he's doing more time looking at the corner than the man in front of him. I don't think that's a good idea. This round's still very much up in the air. Lopez continues to look to punish the body. Argy Lagos. Staying very compact here in the final round. For all the ability Argy Lagos has, he doesn't really look to establish a jab on the outside. He just goes, he'll get on the outside, he'll just put his gloves up and wait for Lopez to get body to body with him again. Like you said, he knows he's coming. And he also knows he's not going to jab his way in, so he just waits for him. Yeah, but you can also dictate a little bit from the outside. If you imagine you keep a guy like Lopez on the outside, you may confuse him totally. This is an easy fight if Argy Lagos had a jab. Yeah. 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 And utilize that. Oh, movement and explosiveness. Mouthpiece out. Mouthpiece. I think that's, uh, Not sure who. Oh, Lopez. Lopez mouthpiece out. Which I think hurts him, honestly, this 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 break. Yeah, because now what he's going to do, he's going to walk right back to Argelago. He's going to slip and get punch him right in the face. Yep. But also, I think I think his conditioning is a little bit better than Argelago's right now. Yeah. Oh, hey, there, there he goes. It <laughs> and especially with Argelago's not fighting until tonight here in the year 2023. Final 30 seconds of our first fight of the night. Oh, good uppercut from Lopez there. And right back comes Aguilagos, of course. Lopez is at victories over an 11 and 2 fighter, a 10, 1 and 2 fighter. Tonight, looking to hand Aguilagos just his second career loss. And Lopez has been in tough, and he's brought it tonight, too. Oh. They go the distance. Good fight. I wish Chico Guzman would show some emotion and, you know, little enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> guy's oozing it. Always does. I 
from the start. Lopez Argilagos, round two. And this has been a, you know, a great opener, fun fight from start to finish. You got the pressure from Lopez all night long, each and every round bringing it. And you got this, that slick, savvy work from Aguilagos, who's been, who landed great counter punches, picked his spots at times, landed really clean punches. But Champ, as you alluded to, just allowing Lopez to walk in the front door, not taking charge at any point tonight. And really, it's going to be one of those decisions from the judges, like, what do you like? Yeah, and was, you could see Aguilar was more talent, but Lopez was not going to just be denied simply by talent. So the question is, did Aguilagos do enough of the better work that he did when he did work? Right. Did he do enough of it? Because in between that, Lopez worked plenty. He did some good work on his own, especially with the, with the body shots. And, and that's the thing, they're going to get recognized. Round. See, both guys, everybody's smiling and happy right now until they get the decision. And right. And somebody's going to get mad. They may, they may start yelling at each other. You know? <laughs> like, both these guys, both these guys are going to think they won, and it looks, it looks that way. All the sportsmanship ends when, yeah. when one guy loses uh, these kind of fights. Nine and one, Argilagos. Jose Lopez looking for his fifth career victory. Judges have rendered their decision to make it official. Mark Lichtenfeld. What's it? What's it? Ladies and gentlemen, after eight hard-fought rounds, we go to the scorecards. Tito Wilgo scores the bout 78-74, Lopez. Brian Gary sees it 77-75, Argalagos. And Rodolfo Aguilar scores the bout 76-76, we have a draw. It was what you wanted, guys. <laughs> and it really was. It really was one of those fights of what you wanted, right? <laughs> Jose Lopez coming off a split draw. He had a majority draw back in 2018. So you, here on Pro Box TV, we just do it again. Hey, we'll, we'll take that on our air. That was a great fight. Yep. So the judges see different things. And in the end, they somehow tie. They agree it's a draw. Third draw of Jose Lopez's career. Argy Lagos moves to 9 1 and 1. Welcome back to Wednesday Night Fights here on your boxing channel, Pro Box TV. Mike Goldberg alongside my powerful partners, the former two-time world champion, Paulie Molinaggi, former world champion, Chris Algieri. They both know that my birthday was the 24th, and I cannot wait to open my gifts after we're on the air tonight. Chris, I know you got me something nice. It's really big, though, so it's going to get delivered. It's kind of on its way. <laughs> that means I'm not getting anything, Paula. <laughs> a great night of Pro Box TV. Oh, well. But the gift that, we're the gift that keeps on giving here. Yeah, and we give it every other Wednesday. And you know what? This just in. David Benavides is a beast. <laughs> That's not news to us. No, it is not. <laughs> That's not news to us. And I'll tell you what, every time he fights, his opponent finds himself in deep waters. I watched the post-fight press conference, and the last words that David Benavides said was, Welcome to the David Benavidez era. Going back 40 years, man, I don't think we've seen a, a, a fighter with this type of skill set, with this type of size, with this type of determination, uh, punch count. I mean, you name it, man. This guy has it all. He can do it all in a ring, man. He's going to be the, the head of this sport. Um, you know, whether he gets to the Canelo fight or not, 
I think that the Canelo era is coming to an end, and and David Benavides is right. This is this is going to be his time for a while. Uh, he is he is phenomenal. I'm gonna call this guy. Um, he's like the a sweet science killer. But once you took all the titles, you have ran out of excuses because now the guy who has most deserving of the title shot has to get a title shot, and you've got all the titles. If he doesn't fight him. Isn't it a bad look for boxing? We always talk about what's good and bad for boxing, but but isn't it bad for boxing also? If he doesn't fight Benavides, shouldn't he just sell out and fight Jake Paul? I mean, he's not serious about fighting the biggest challengers, just cash out. At the end of the day, it's not gonna matter that much for Canelo and his legacy. I don't think it's gonna matter for ben Benavides either. If they don't fight, Benavides is still gonna be the next guy. And he's gonna have a long run where he's gonna be able to build his own legacy. I wouldn't mind seeing a Benavides be Vol fight. I wouldn't mind seeing him go up to 175 pounds and facing the champion there. Truth is, anytime David Benavides is in the ring, we are all watching. And interestingly, Marcus Valle, who's up next, Marcus Valle was asked if he watched the fight on Saturday. Paulie, and he said, of course he didn't. And he said, big fights like that motivate him because he wants to be on that big stage. He wants the world to see his skills. When you're a prospect, part of the reason you're so enthusiastic about training, about the road and the journey up, up, up the ladder is because you constantly in front of you, you see your dreams and you and you kind of live them vicariously through these big name fighters that you watch uh, throughout the year as you get one step closer every time you fight. And every time you fight, you know it gets you that much closer. You have the opportunity to keep impressing and make people talk about you. And humbly, Marcus Valle said he has a similar mindset as Benavides, seek and destroy. Oh, absolutely. And you see that when he fights. I mean, he, he always comes supremely conditioned, yep. looking to do work, looking to break his man down. It is a very similar mindset, actually. It's a, it's a really good uh, aspect that he said, and uh, I believe it. Yep, he was very excited in the fighter meetings when asked about the Benavides fight over the weekend, and now he is set to put on a show. It is a battle of unbeatens. Our tale of the tape for this eight-round super welterweight matchup. 9-0, Marcus Valle, two inches taller than his opponent, Farid Goga. Farid Goga, born in Congo. He has been in Phoenix, Arizona for many years. He is five years the elder of Valle. He is 10-0. Second fight of the night. Once again, we get it up to Mark Lichtenfeld. All right, ladies and gentlemen, someone's O has got to go in this eight-round super welterweight fight. Your judges for this contest, Shami Shipman, Rose Lesend, and Rodolfo Aguilar. And your referee in charge is Michael De Jesus. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white and blue. He weighed in at 152.8 pounds. His record, 10 wins, no losses, with six wins by knockout. From Phoenix, Arizona, please welcome Farid Shogun Goga. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black with purple. He weighed in at 153.4 pounds. He is also undefeated. Nine wins, no losses, with seven wins by knockout. From Tampa, Florida, he is Marcus Valle! All right, guys, the rules we told to you in the locker room and in the corner. You know I expect. Touch gloves if you want to. If not, go back to your corners. Last fight was a short one on May 17th. Lasted two and a half minutes for Marcus Valle. He'll get a lot more from Goga here tonight. 10 and 0 against 9 and 0. Here we go. It's time to fight. White and sky blue trunks for Farid Goga from Congo, living in Phoenix, Arizona. Marcus Valle in the black and purple. Valle with that big, long frame will look to utilize his height and reach advantage. And Goga trying to establish that distance early. You don't want Marcus Valle to get comfortable closing the gap. So Goga trying to smartly use that jab and be busy with it early on. Yeah, but one thing about this pro box ring, it is very small. And Marcus Vine knows how to make it smaller on you. Smaller, exactly. It was really small Ooh. in our last fight. Well, oh, they could have fought a combo. You got that right. Third fight of 2023 for Valle, first career eight-rounder. 
Island, a nice overhand right a few moments ago. Has a nice solid jab, too. Goga goes like this, he's gonna end up using too much energy. And that's a vibe that kind of has, has you feeling. It makes you feel like the walls are closing in, and it makes you burn more energy than you should. Goga trying to fight his way to some freedom, but if you fight your way to that freedom of uh, having some space, you're gonna end up burning energy quickly, which is what Benavides did to Andre. The exactly, other exactly. You read my mind. You want to deceptively buy your time instead of fighting your way for your time, because otherwise you end up getting buried in fatigue. Vaya is not having trouble finding Goga up to this point. Landed some good jabs, some nice right hands over the top. And that, that, there's that left hook to the body. Both yep. Vaya brothers are excellent body punchers, and it's a big aspect of their offense. Goga well, landed some shots as well, guys. But again, it's part of part of the allure of Vaya is he's uh, a little a little bit hittable at times, but he's the kind of guy who uh, is very offensive-minded and uh, knows how to leverage his shots well. And Goga did say Marcus is undefeated for a reason. He's sharp, he's always ready. So a lot of mutual respect between 10-0 and 9-0 and and here in our second fight of the night. That's Marcus one, Valle. And that's one thing about Valle, you know, he is hittable. He also doesn't really mind getting hit, which I don't really like, but it's fun to watch. Asked if he feels the pressure as one of the top prospects in his weight division right now. No pressure at all. I love this. This is what I do. As long as I am ready, as long as I am prepared, there is no pressure. Well, one thing about also, you know, you say he's hittable, but one thing about even if he ends up getting caught with a shot here and there, he doesn't break his form. His position never breaks, and that's that has a way of mentally fatiguing you as well because his positioning is always dangerous in front of you. And that's what I meant by not really minding getting hit. It doesn't seem to affect him all that much. He walks through the shots and keeps doing what he was doing. He's very workmanlike. Take one to give two or three. Makes it exciting. is by his younger brother, Dominic Valle, we, on the card. And we excuse the graphic, guys. Kyle Adzevich was our old main event. Yes. But uh, he fell out with an injury, so we'd had, we'd had to adjust that. Hot Rod was a lot of fun, not only to talk to before his fight here, but the show he put on on Pro Box TV. Goga started this round a little different, fighting off the front foot, pushing Valle back some, see if he can keep that up which I think is a good idea. You don't want to just be backing up. Like you said, champ, Faye makes the ring very small. Goga did land some good shots in the first round. See if he can build on that here. Seven finishes in his nine wins for Marcus Valle. Six knockouts and a 10-0 record for Shogun. Goga doing a good job, not o like overloading the punches, just letting his hands go, touching Valle. Upstairs, downstairs, building up his combinations. Oh, yeah, he's, done a, he's done some good work this, this round, champ. Mm. But is it too much? Is he doing too much? Is he going to start to slow down? Because, again, Valle has, you, has that way of making you feel like you need to work so much more than you need to. When it looked that way in the first round, it looked like they were fighting at two different speeds. Yeah. <laughs> you can start to see the fatigue now on Goga as Valle's starting to hit him cleaner. And what happens when you get a little bit fatigued, you become a little bit more hittable. Punches get a little wider, a little more open, a little easier to counter. First oh, fight outside man. of Arizona for Goga. I think the most effective punch from Valle and has been the jet. Yeah, that shot right there. And when you talk to Mark Ferre about both of the Valle brothers, 
He says, to be a great teacher, you've got to have great students, and they are the cream of the crop. Oh, big shot from Goga there. Right hand over the top. Catches Valle. Mm. Both men landing here in round two. Goga coming off a win back in Phoenix in June over previously unbeaten Jerome Jones Jr. And that goes a long way, knowing that you've been able to beat an undefeated fighter. You've taken an O before, fighting another undefeated here, an undefeated fighter here in his hometown, or his home home ring at least. It pretty much is his hometown. It's the home ring, the home turf, home field advantage for Marcus Valle, who trains right here in Plant City at the Pro Box facilities. Go has been at Southpaw for about 40 seconds to yeah. a minute now, guys. See if he sticks around in this stance. Well, I think he ate so many jabs from that orthodox position. May not be a bad idea, although Goga's having a pretty good round. Some swelling on the face of Marcus Valle as well. Oh, nice uppercut on the inside there. but still a good, well-timed shot. He might have an opportunity there to counter that jab of Valle. 10-0, Farid Goga in the white and sky blue trunks. 9-0, Marcus Valle in the black and purple. First five wins by knockout. Goga has gone to decision oh, in four shot. of his last five. Goga set that up nicely, was jabbing from the outside, jab down to the body, through the right hand over the top. Big shots here from Goga. And a big smile on the face of Marcus Valle. Not but for how long? Southpaw again, Paulie. Yeah, but that, that's the thing. When your defense is just keep your gloves high, you, a, a repetition of straight punches can bust through that, that guard sometimes, which is important why you need to sort of mix your defense between blocking and also moving your head at close range. Personally, I like the guys earmuffed in front of me because I threw a lot of combinations. You can always find yeah, the holes. You can always find the holes when you keep a guy's hands at home. By trying to do exactly that from the angle. Yeah, but Ngoga, and that's why Ngoga was able to have some success there is because you throw enough shots at the gloves, it will, it will reposition the gloves and you can bust through. So when you keep your gloves up like that, you've got to be cognizant of that and maybe fire right back in between. I think Goga found a home for that right hand last round. He saw that he can catch Valle with it. Came out from the beginning of this round to set it up. It looks like he's setting it up again right here. There it is. And off the jab, it was the nice counter a moment ago by Goga. Goga said it was a war zone back in Congo. His entire immediate family moved to Phoenix years ago, and now about a dozen members of his family have made their way to the desert. Trains in suburban Glendale, Arizona. Benson Henderson territory. Can't imagine training in gyms out there. It gets so hot. 117 degrees in it's the summer. It's heat, Chris. Oof. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> But you stick your head in the oven, it's a dry heat, it's really hot. Yeah. I speak from experience. <laughs> My home since 2004. Ooh, big shots here from Valle. Not a lot landed, but he was loading up. And of course I see a guy with the nickname Shogun and I'm just looking for John Jones or Dan Henderson. Shogun Hua in MMA and proudly taking the Japanese Ooh. barbarian commander in chief nickname is Congo's Farid Goga. 30 seconds, round three. Oh, three straight uppercuts there by, by Valle. He's saying, you're gonna keep your head in the inside? I'll keep uppercutting it. And Goga comes back with some good combinations. He hits with the right hand on the end there. Lot of southpaw still for Goga. 
who said his best punch is his right, his straight cross from the right side, the orthodox side. Right now, Valle putting a lot of pressure on him. Good fight. We see some of the action from that last round. That's that big overhand right that I was speaking about the round before. Goga did a good job early on setting that up. Here we see him letting those hands go. We spoke about that high guard defense, how if you keep those hands moving, you can find the holes. And Goga had good success with that early in the round. But later on, Valle came back. There was that triple uppercut combination punctuated with a nice hard jab at the end. You see Goga also kind of rolled with some of those it didn't land as cleanly as initially thought as well, but still, creative creative thinking on the part of Valle. Again, I think the jab has been the most effective punch so far from Valle. Goga looking to make a major statement against a highly touted 154-pounder and 24-year-old Puerto Rican, Marcus Valle. Black and purple for the Bees, Shogun in the white and blue. Oh. Round number four. Big right hand from Goga over the top there, right after Valle landed a nice jab. And he said, as I mentioned before, Chris, he believes his right hand is the most dangerous weapon. Hey, listen, I'm sure if Goga is going to trade jabs for right hands, he'll take the right hand all night long. Back to orthodox, at least at the start of round Ooh. number four. Valle pushing the aggression. Goga doing a job, good job of finding those holes. Especially early in the rounds. It seems like he fades a little later on. And we talk about it all the time. Valle went the distance back in February with Jared Tennant. Other than that, it's been finish after finish after finish. The DeMarcus Layton night of work was very short. Sanchez was DQ'd for holding. And so Marcus really in a battle here tonight, which is just going to help him grow and grow and grow. You know, Valle has been hit to the body a few times, and each time he's, he's made an exclamation towards Goga. I, I don't like telling guys what's going on, and the fact that he's doing that may mean that he's feeling those shots. Good check hook there from Valle over the top. Valle trying to space out a little bit, utilize that reach and height, misses with the uppercut. Mm. There's that hard jab again. Sometimes Valle looks to me like he's looking for one shot in particular, you know, and then, and then he, almost like he's aiming a good shot there. Good uppercuts from both hands, but at times, I think sometimes you, what you can do is you can throw some throwaway punches to disguise the real shot you're looking for. Valle's always dangerous with that left hook. Keep an eye out for that. There it is, right on yep. cue there, Goldie. Good call. Thank you, Chris. Hey, Goldie, switching southpaw. He, he finds his little cheap ways of, you know, winning those little moments. You know, Goga. He's no slouch. He's been a regular at the Celebrity Theater in Phoenix, the Glendale Civic Center. First fight outside of his home state now of Arizona. Here on Pro Box TV. Time for Goga to step up and step out. You got that right. And oh. Goga, by the way, is we're in round four, 10 and 0. He has averaged 3.4 rounds per fight. So let's see how his stamina holds up if this one continues to be a highly contested battle. Yeah, oh. we just passed his average. I was going to say, I'm yep. no math wizard like you, uh, Goldie, but I believe and we are past that point. Yes. Yeah. The combination there to Goga at the end of the round. I'm all over it tonight, Chris. <laughs> You're on fire, as usual. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Ooh. A year older and a year wiser, right? That's exactly right. And a year sore. <laughs> <laughs> That's the midway point. Mark Frey. You're just standing there. Right, just go in your shot and standing there. We got to use that jab, double right hand, double jab. Bring the right, one, two, quick one, two. Your head hunting, he goes down, go to the body. Chance, use your jab, work behind your jab, and shoot the right hand. You're throwing shots, and then you're standing back. You're not giving me an ass, you're not giving me another shot like that, right hand. But if you throw when, you're, when you're in close, I need you swinging, okay? Right now, I see, I see a lot of times when you're hitting them and you're catching them and then you're backing out. 
Okay, no, I don't need to back it out. I need to stay in there. You caught him, hit him, turn him, hit him, turn him. Arturo Ortega in the corner of Farid Goga. Round number five, first career eight-round fight for both of these men, well past his average. As we mentioned before, Farid Shogun Goga. I will say one of the things that's impressed me about both Vaye brothers is their conditioning and their work ethic in the gym. Yes. Curious which, to see which how goes that holds back up. to uh, Paulie, what we were talking about before, where where both Dominic and Marcus say they don't feel the pressure because they know they put in the work. Yeah. Oh, good right hand there by Marcus. Yeah, and when that, I mean that's where the confidence of any prospect comes in. You know, when you you know you're working your hardest, honestly. You know, you can go in the ring feeling you prepared. You know, you feel the butterflies like normal, but of course you also feel that ultra confidence. The combination there by Goga. No Stepping bigger. back out the way the trainer, his trainer, told him not to do, and Yalkis follows him back and catches him with some shots. Some good jabs by Goga. Goga's a tricky guy. Switches sides, fights pretty well out of his outball position. Sets up his punches nicely. Upstairs, downstairs, you see him mixing things up. Seems to avoid the big shots pretty well. Marcus and Dominic's father, Junior, has always told his boys, don't lie to yourself. And that goes back to the training and conditioning, Chris, that you talked about. Doesn't mean you're gonna win, doesn't mean you're gonna have a perfect night, but at least you're not trying to fake it. No, these, these boys aren't faking it, the Valle brothers. They, they put in the work, and like you were alluding to, champ, there's no bigger confidence boost in the world than being in shape. One year, nine months, and 13 days apart. Marcus, the older of the two, Dominic fights on the 13th. Got ourselves a fight here with two unbeaten men, combined record of 19-0. Shogun going southpaw a lot in this fight. You know, as you step up, the fights don't get easier. Nope. Shogun coming in. Fair Goga knew this was going to be the toughest test of his career, and I think the same can be said as we've seen so far for Marcus Valle. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Definitely his toughest fight so far. He's got a savvy guy in front of him. He's undefeated for a reason. And it also, you know, it's been able to control the jab of Valle a little bit better, and it's made his own jab a little bit more effective, turning southpaw uh, Goga. Yeah, I think he's had a, a good jab from the southpaw stance, and it's allowed him to not get hit with as many jabs being a southpaw as, as Valle had, a, had shown a good jab early on, Champ, as you had mentioned. And Champ, you had mentioned how sometimes it seems like Valle gets on a one-track mind in terms of punch that he's looking for. Goga's the opposite. He seems like he sets things up, lets his hands go, and finds openings and lets them go. Yeah, Goga kind of puts together punches and sees what he can, whatever can land out of those. together, not really looking for the one at a time. And he forces Gogo to get on his bike. Yeah, but Valle is not cutting off the ring well. He's just following. Yeah, that's one thing he hasn't done really well tonight, Champ. 
to allow Goga to find the escape, especially going that, w that way to the left. And when Goga finds the escape, then he comes back throwing combination like he just did. Marcus has said in the past, he's gonna find a way to win every time. And he's gonna have to get creative, be brilliant at the basics and add in some other aspects of his ever-evolving arsenal here against Farid Goga, because this is a close fight. And Goga showed up in shape. You, know, yeah, because you mentioned it early that you know he was, he was working really hard in the beginning and how long he's gonna keep it up. We're in round number six and he's still here. Yeah, as a matter of fact, yeah, I think he succeeded in sort of slowing Valle's pace down because Valle is not bringing as much of a pace as, as uh, we've seen him earlier. Third fight of 2023 for Goga. Same as I had mentioned earlier for Marcus Valle. Also, Valle at times is getting a little bit too predictable offensively, and Goga is able to kind of figure that out. Also, I haven't seen many jabs from Valle. Yeah, not since he turned southpaw, uh, Goga, right? Yep. And Goga landed a double jab from the southpaw and, and, stance. And, and, and again, there's another one. one. Yep. Yeah, Goga's jab got much better out of the southpaw stance. Well, I think he did it to get away from Valle's jab, and he's done a good job doing that. And inadvertently, he made his own jab. <laughs> exactly, inadvertently found his offense. There's oh, there's a good combination by Goga. And I like see, see Goga changes the levels. He threw that jab down low and landed well, too. Well, that's the thing, champ. He puts together the punches, then whatever lands, lands. A lot of times you put together punches, you may create an opening from the earlier punches in the combination. It's something Valle has to do. Sometimes Valle looks like he's looking for every single shot he's throwing to be the one that lands. Sometimes you've got to use throwaway punches. Cut under the eye of Valle, the left Yep. Left eye. Just saw that as well, partner. Which we were mentioning the jab of Goga, and he landed some right hooks as well. The right hook there by Valle. Yep. That's a new punch. A new weapon in the arsenal this fight. Blood from the nose of Goga. 15 seconds, round number six, scheduled for eight. Oh! oh Goga there staying up high on the ropes. Big left hook. That's his punch. That will remind Goga you to answer it. That will remind you to get low, right, Goldie? You got that right. Get out of the way. Especially coming from Bias. That's punch. That was the uppercut there by Valle. I'm looking for it again, he misses it, but he comes back with the jab. This is the early in the round when Valle finally started to, just to put the combinations together instead of trying to land every single shot on its own. And then the good hook there is Goga staying two up high on the rope. Something you don't want to do is be that up high, especially with your hands low, and a good hook by Valle Beautiful on the end shot. of that. Goga took that well, though. He came back yeah. almost immediately. And in between that, Goga did a lot of good, good work that last round, I gotta say. Some of that good work showing up on the face of Valle there, got that little cut under the eye. Not in a bad position, doesn't look like it's a bad cut either. Come forward, turn corner, keep those hands up. Unchartered territory. Seventh round for the first time for both men in their professional career. Marcus Valle, 9-0, Farid Goga, 10-0. In a very close fight, Goga has had a lot of success from the southpaw stance. But he's in the right hand in the stance now. Yep. Both guys came out snapping hard jabs. Neither one of them getting in their head off the line, so they've been landing pretty clean. He wants to land that right cross, does Goga. Goga's moving right into the right hand right now. Keeps moving to his left with his left hand down. And also, Valle's jab gets working better when now Goga's in the right hand in the stance. So what does Goga do? He turns right southpaw. Right yeah, Paulie. I was wondering how long he would stay there. Oh, Goga mixing up those shots well, throws a little lead uppercut. Goga, I don't know if he does this on purpose or inadvertently, but he, he changes levels a lot. So yes. it, it makes him difficult to hit, it makes him difficult to really track his trajectory of his offense. He's tricky, he's a very fluid fighter. Like he's not really, like you said, like he, he, he lets things go, finds the openings and lets the hands go. It's a bit unorthodox. Right? Very, it's very unorthodox, but it's, it's effective at times. And staying low against a guy who's two inches taller and has about a three inch Ooh. reach advantage, never a bad idea either. It's by his jab hitting the southpaw of Golga. That's what you'd like to see more from Valle. 
Also, what he's not, what he's doing, he's allowing Goga's jab to back him up. And Goga doing a good job of continuing that jab because either lands it or it backs Valle out of position. Valle needs to, but you'd like to see Valle do a good hook there by Valle. What you'd like to see Valle do is sometimes slip and counter with a right hand yeah. on that jab from Goga. Because it's not like Goga faints with it or throws it at a different speed. It's coming at the same speed. So at times, you've got to almost expect it. And see right there, again, he did that time it landed. But what did it do? It took Valle out of position. There's no counter there. Little slip and rip. Goga pushing Valle, unlike any of his opponents have done thus far in his professional career. See, again, that jab. Valle's got to learn to deal with it a little bit better. And to Goga's credit, he came on jabbing all night. He did. It's all part of the evolution, all part of the journey. Right here, either man, if they had a feint, yep. it could really change. Yep, change just a little bit of just trajectory. Just a little bit, because they're, they're both standing in front of each other posing. But at they, least what Goga does, champ, he changes level, so it almost acts as a feint at times. You there see? it is, that was actually oh, a good, good counter right there from, right hand. good counter there from Valle, though. And that opened the cut. The jab a moment ago, that cut under the left eye of Marcus Valle opened up a little bit now. And then Valle with a good body shot a second ago as well. Almost poured into the rib cage again there. Round number seven, scheduled for eight. Goga has flashed a good chin, very good durability. He's been hit with some big shots tonight. Landed a share, his share as well. Yeah. Oof. Well, we got a fight in our hands. Oof. Second straight unbeaten fighter. Southpaw quickly. Well, comes, then, comes out right hand every time that he turns yep. southpaw. Yeah, he comes out with the jab and then with the, with the orthodox position, then he switches southpaw to try to be more elusive. But both men are coming out here looking to make an exclamation point. First fight was a draw. This one a close one as well. Counter jab by Goga again. That left hook thrown by Valle. Yeah, champ, you're right at the last round about that faint, man. What a faint would do <laughs> between the rhythm of these guys. For right? either one of them, either one of them. A lot of movement from Goga a moment ago, trying to roll <laughs> under and find an opening. Oh, good lead. Again, that lead hand from Goga, very, very solid. Oh, oh, and just Goga switching up the punches, man. Punch variation. And that's what it is, champ. He just puts them together. Yep. Now, you think the softball attack from Goga has been a bit of a surprise? Could it be? Yeah, that was yeah. going to say. Could it be that guy just never expected it? Absolutely. I don't even think Goga expected it. He just, yeah. like, turned the softball, and he's like, this is working. I'm just going to stay. Well, I see what you mean when I said fluid, and you said awkward. He's, like, awkwardly fluid. I, don't, I didn't mean <laughs> yeah. fluid like it looks good. I mean fluid because he just lets it go. Yeah. It's not smooth, but <laughs> No, it's it certainly works. not smooth, but it's worked. It works. Smooth and unorthodox. Oh, good right hand there by Goga. Mm. Past the midway point of the eighth and final round. Oh, Valle just missed with that hook. And he took a headbutt for it. Oh. Right on that injured eye. Good counter, good little jab there from Valle. That was a little, that was a little slip and rip there, Paulie, finally. And then Goga comes right back, and that's the thing. If Valle doesn't follow it up, Goga will take the initiative instead. seconds. There's a feint. 
again, that jab of Goga, even if it doesn't land, what does it do? It's taking Valle out of position. Well, he needs to be set. He wants to have those feet set so he can throw those power shots. Good jab by Valle. Ooh, good right hand, too. Valle with Valle turning into a little bit of the boxer here, fighting in the middle distance and outside. Final 15 seconds of this fight. Gonna be another one where both guys thought they won, guys. Yep. Yep. It's gonna be the competitive oh. good right hand there by Valle. Every little bit counts if you want to punctuate the round. Gotta finish strong, especially in the last round. They go the distance. Marcus Valle and Baragoga. Younger brother Dominic. Definitely some butterflies in his stomach right now. Next, it is our co-main event of the evening. Marcelino Nicholas Lopez comes in on short notice for a 10-round welterweight matchup against Tarek Zayn. Born in Morocco, now training in T1 of Mexico. This guy's got, I think, as many degrees as you have. Been in 54 different countries. Loves Mexico, highly educated, but beats people up for a living. That is our co-main coming up next. Valle and Goga go the full eight. Yeah, and this was a real battle here, battle of attrition, positioning, and two undefeated prospects. Neither one wanted to give an inch. And a battle of very differing styles. Yes. And, and the combinations of Goga really, I think did a lot of good work. But Valle landed some good shots in single mode with body shots, some solid uppercuts. But I'm telling you, man, this is another, another difficult one to score here. Yeah, neither guy let the other one pull away with it, even though they were both trying throughout. And that's what you get when you got undefeated guys. Exactly. Neither one wants to really give up that O. Neither guy knows how to lose. This was at the beginning of that sixth round where Baye came out really strong and then finished strong with that hook. The goal was too up high on the ropes. And I think some of these big clean shots that we're seeing, they could be the difference if you're a judge and you're having trouble picking a round. Big clean shots like that. Especially at the, end of, at the end of some of the rounds. Baye did a good job of closing a few of the rounds with the bigger shot right at the end, which is something that in a close round, maybe the judge will take into consideration and give to you. Did a good job with that in the eighth round, the final round right there with that big right hand. Judges have rendered their decision who will remain unbeaten as a professional with the official decision. Here is Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight hard punching rounds, we go to the scorecards. Rose Lesend scores at 77-75. Shami Shipman and Rodolfo Aguilar see at 78-74 for your winner by unanimous decision, and still undefeated, Marcus Valle! Unanimous decision victory in his first career eight rounder, Valle is 10 and 0. <laughs> Toughest test of his professional career, passed as Goga, Put on a great show and taste defeat for the first time in his pro career. That one a second ago, guys, was the A in the other race side. Perfect yeah. example. Yeah, yeah. Neither one wanted to give an inch, and they, and they fought that way the whole time, man. I mean, really uh, tough to separate them each and every round. Good, good work. Absolutely. And the best thing about watching Marcus Valle is the fact that he continues to progress. And Mark Ferre will tell you he likes to see his young guys be tested. Yeah, no, this is this is a good fight in a, in a step of a young fighter. You know, you've got to go through fights like this. you got to have that nerve when they're waiting for the judge's scorecard. Yeah. Oh, man. You know, it's, you always want to dominate. You want to win. But listen, when you're fighting these undefeated guys, they're not going to want to give an inch. And we saw that tonight. So he got pushed tonight. He learned a lot, I'm sure. I'm sure he's going to go back and watch and see things that he needs to work on. And he's only going to make him for a better fighter for it. 
All right, yeah. so let's talk about our co-main event, Paulie. We have Marcelino Nicholas Lopez, 37 years old, coming in on short notice against Tarek Zanin. What a story. Born in Morocco, educated in the United Kingdom, now lives in Mexico and trains at Eric Morales' gym. He's got bachelors, he's got a master's. He's out there with you, brother. He's on a world tour, this guy. He might be ahead of me. I got 54 countries. World tour educated and... Yep. Of course, like the champ here at School of Hard Knocks as well. You know, you yeah. know, you know, it's not just about the being formally educated. You get educated in the ring as well. In the UK, bachelor's degree in business psychology, master's degree in blockchain technology and AI. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. This guy's a man of the future. He is a man of the future, but he says, all that education, I just go around kicking butt for a living instead. Our tale of the tape for this, our co-main event of the evening. The taller fighter is Tarek Zena. He will have a slight reach advantage. They meet at 147. About, you know, one weight class up for Zanin, but he said with Lopez coming in on late notice, happy to do so. Once again, Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is scheduled for 10 rounds in the welterweight division. Your judges, Tito Wilgo, Brian Gary, and Shami Shipman. And your referee in charge is Massimo Montanini. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the silver and black. He weighed in at 146.2 pounds. He is undefeated. His record, 12 wins, no losses, one draw with eight wins by way of knockout. Fighting out of Tijuana, Mexico. Please welcome Tarek the Sandstorm Zena. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the green with white. He weighed in at 146.4 pounds. His record, 37 wins, just three losses, one draw, and 22 wins by knockout from Arbenos, Argentina. He is Marcelino Nino Lopez. You understand me? Okay. Touch him up. Go. Thank you, sir. Yes. Tarek Zanin understands him because he speaks four languages. English, hey, Spanish, boss. French, and Arabic. Is that time you, Paulie? You're, you're at about four. No, no, he's, he's ahead of me. Like I said, he's a man of the future. <laughs> he is. And, and it's man. funny you say that because he said, Pro Box is futuristic as we get started in our co-main event. Here we go. It's time to fight. Lopez in the white and green trunks. Nine years the elder of the sandstorm, Tarek Zanin in the silver and black trunks, unbeaten as a professional. Goldie, I'm waiting for you to finish that introduction because I was going to say, as much of a man of the future as he is, his trunks are a thing of the past. <laughs> He's a very old school throwback guy as well. Which, you just took it right from the fighter interview. Old school, but loves the pro box platform. He said it is futuristic. So he's got the old school look, but he's on the future of professional boxing. We are your boxing oh. channel. Big right hand by Lopez. Yeah, Lopez is trying to send him right into the future with that right hand. That right. I was going to say, he's in tough tonight. I've seen Lopez many times. Physically strong guy. Obviously, you can see from his body type. Um, a ton of experience. Been on a knockout streak. Hasn't been that busy, though. We'll see if that hurts him. Also, the late notice. And 37 years old, Jim. Yeah, yeah. Just nine fights, Chris, since March of 2015. Did fight in March of this year. Training in Coachella, California. Under Marcos Caballero. His teammate, Lopez's teammate, Jorge Castaneda. We'll fight next in our main event of the evening. I didn't get to watch much tape on Tarek because there really isn't much out there. But Lopez caught onto something that I saw right away. As he jabs, he moves to his left and will be open for overhand rights. Let's see if Lopez can capitalize on that once more. Very experienced, 37 years old. And he said he's here to show the world that he's still relevant. He said, I'm a boxer that's fresh. I've never been hurt. Co-main event scheduled for 10. 
Obviously stays in good condition, taking this fight on short notice. Looks very physically strong. Ooh, good overhand right there from Tarek. Lopez was actually scheduled for a fight in Russia. Well traveler. Yep, but glad to have it in Plant City, Florida. He doesn't uh -huh. get the frequent flyer yeah. miles, but he doesn't have the jet lag either. We're no stranger to tough Argentinians here on Pro Box TV. You got that right. Pretty much every show, I feel like we have some guy coming or trying to upset the apple cart. Nice feint there from Lopez. Lopez trying to track down Zayna, but he'd be better off cutting off the ring. Yeah, a little bit too much following, right, champ? Yeah, yeah, and it's preventing him from being able to really corner Zayna the way he wants to. Zayna. Big swing and a miss. Zayna good showing movement. some good lateral movement, yeah. You, sorry to cut you off there, goalie. You're, you're right on the money. Hey, Michael, are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I knew. After this, you come here, eh? He's looking for the big right here. One of the top stories, the upcoming fight between Devin Haney and Regis Progre, and Zanin broke that one down very well. He is a student of the game, thinks that the movement, the speed, and counterpunching of Haney will be the difference as Devin Haney moves up to 140 and faces Progre on December 9th in San Francisco for the WBC World Super Lightweight Belt. Trying to take it away from the champ. Well, that's interesting, Goldie, because Zayna's using footwork. Exactly yes. all that. Footwork, speed, counterpunching. Which I think is why he said exactly what he did about Devin Haney. Undisputed at 135, now moving to 140. Round number two. Mike Goldberg, my powerful partners, former two-time world champion, the Magic Man, Pauli Malinaji, former world champion, Chris Algieri. Great to be here on the final Wednesday of the month of November 2023. Co-main event, Lopez in the white and green. Zanin, unbeaten as a professional in the silver and black. Zanin boxing very smart from the outside, using lateral movement, picking his punches well. When Lopez, the stronger, stout guy, gets in close, he ties him up or pushes him off like that, creating that distance even in this small ring. But, but the thing about it is, Chim, at a certain point, oh, good right hand there by by Lopez, the, the, the thing about it is if at a certain points in spots, even if you're a mover, you gotta stop and get your respect. Otherwise, you're gonna end up be going into this flight mode where you're gonna make the, every round stressful. You could still win, but it, it ends up becoming stressful if you don't start to make your opponent respect you at a certain point, and it forces you to burn a lot more energy. From Morocco, Gibraltar, to England at age 18 to attend university, moved to Mexico at age 24, because he couldn't get any fights in the UK. He said the original plan was to stay in Tijuana for six months. He's been there for three years and he absolutely loves it. Trains at the Hall of Famer, Eric Morales' gym. Lopez falling into that trap, getting into position and not taking advantage of the real estate. Getting frozen, getting tied up, getting pushed off. Those drunks are truly old school, Paul. <laughs> yeah. The sandstorm. Zayna does use some good body work, though. Good hook to the body at times, touching. Ooh. Big swing and a miss by Lopez. 22 of his 37 wins have been finishes. Eight of 12 for Zayna. That's that punch I was talking about. That shot will be there all night as Zayna moves out to that left with that jab moving. Lopez can time that.
el segundo? ¿Cómo te sientes? Sí, dame un ramo. Vale, vamos. Así que va, pero tocadito, pa, 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 en combinación, pa, 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 él no se va a parar. Remember, I don't want, if you get hit with something, I don't want you telling the, the judges that you got hit with something. Maybe they didn't see it, but because you did something. Oh, shit. Three. Second career 10-round fight for Tarek Zanin. In fact, in June, he went the 10-round distance against Jesus Sriracha, who has fought here on Pro Box TV. They fought to a highly contested majority draw. Sriracha earning a regional belt here on Pro Box TV. Round number three, white and green for Lopez, silver and black for Tarek Zanin. Lopez trying to punch in between now. Zanin finally trying to get that timing. And there's that right hand, champ. That's, that's when Zanin's in trouble. He moves out to that left with that lead hand down, or when he jabs and brings it back slow. There it is again. In January, Sriracho handed Cesar Francis his first career setback to earn that WBO Latino super lightweight belt. They're all coming to Pro Box TV, guys. Both men talked about, I mentioned that Tarek said it's futuristic. Lopez said he has seen a lot of cards on Pro Box before. Very excited and honored to be here. Speaking of old school, we're talking about the old school trunks of Zena. The style of Lopez reminds me of like a Gene Fulmer. Like super thick, <laughs> yeah. explosive. Like a slow on his feet. Like a fire hydrant lumbering forward, big shots, overhand shots. Mouthpiece hits the canvas. Still to come, our main event of the evening. Orlando Gonzalez and Jorge Castaneda for the WBA Continental North America Super Featherweight Belt. That's still to come on Wednesday night here on Pro Box TV. I hope our younger fans are looking up Gene Fulmer right now. <laughs> Fun guy to watch. Ooh, so the corner, I just saw that. They said they, they wanted a dip low jab high, and exactly Lopez did and landed well. Zayn is hard to track down, so you gotta hit what you can get at, even to the body. I think Lopez is not doing enough body punching, because that will, the opportunity to throw it to the body is there. And obviously, at times he gets to Zayn and he's waiting, and Zayn ends up smothering him. But and, as at you, set, and at center ring, some good pot shotting being done by Zayna but as each you, and every round. But as you said about Zayna, he's not getting the respect. No. He's not stemming the flow of the forward pressure from Lopez. And this is a 10-round fight. We're only in round three. Yeah, and, that, and, and that's something that even if it may not cost him tonight, it, it, it will eventually cost him. You've got to have those moments where you choose, you know, the, maybe the least risk moment, but you've got to sit there and, and, and throw some hard shots that you sit on or before you, getting back on your bike. Or when you fight a guy unlike Lopez who knows how to cut off the ring yeah. well, because he's just following. Lopez has earned his last eight wins by knockout, 10 of his last 11. Now they've stretched over the past eight years or so, but he has been finishing the fighters standing in front of him. Quick jab from Zane in late. Big swing and a miss. Oh, good hook Not there, that buddy. time. Lopez is trying to punch Zane. Zanin said it's going to be tough for Lopez, short notice. He said it's going to be hard for him to find the holes in my game. Good round. How you feel? Hey, remember, we're going 10 rounds, all right? I don't want to get in caught with some stupid crap. Get your hands up, okay. right? You only I don't hit when you stay there. You stay exactly. So, You're leaving your punches. Two there. shots and step. Two shots and step. You can hard. see him loading with the right hand. He goes, he goes, and he drops it. Sáteme la mano. Este muchacho no se va a parar. No le gana por nada. No hace que lo dejemos torrar que sí. Vamos, papá. Mate un puño, mate un puño. Mate un puño. Ahora sí, ya, ya pasamos el test. Vamos a saltar un poquito. Vamos a comenzar a levantar. Ahora sí, vamos. Marcos Caballero. Busy man tonight, two fighters on the card. And of course, just a tremendous relationship with Chocolatito. This one continuing round number four, 12-0-1-1. Tarek Zanin, 37-3-1. Marcelino Nicholas Lopez, 
Born and raised in Argentina, now fighting out of Coachella, California. You know, one thing Lopez is going to have, too, he's trying to come forward without using his jab. You know, you can jab your way in there, he throws it, but not really using his jab that much to close that gap. I'm, I've been watching the, for, the corner of Lopez. They've been calling for the jab. I see them motioning to it. Lopez just really hasn't found a home, a home for it yet or really tried all that much. And Zeno with these little snappy jabs, even touch probing left hands, but it, it, man, it measures the distance and he's able, he's very cognizant of his distance. Because when he loses it, you see he does that, he goes into a smother mode, takes away the opportunity for Lopez to work, which is why Lopez, even when he gets close, he just touched the body. That's probably his best bet. Lopez has been at Marcus Caballero's gym for the past couple of months, getting ready for that fight that was to be in Russia. Instead, it's here at the Pro Box TV World Headquarters. Lopez just not letting his hands go enough when he gets into position. Like right here, why would he not be punching? He's got a guy who's fleet of foot. He's trying to hit him in the head, Jim, instead Ooh. of hitting him in the, into the body. Just got to hit anything. And a lot of times when you aim to the body, you you will make your opponent stop moving. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, because they'll, they'll want to block their body and maybe, you know, it'll open up the head. Zanin trying to establish his jab, keep it in the face of Lopez. Goes to the body. Lopez is an explosive guy when he gets his feet underneath him. You got that right. Fernando Fernandez is Zanin's full-time trainer in Mexico, unable to be in the corner tonight. But he is well handled by Jacia Lopez. Zanin. Looking to bring up that punch count here in round number four. Staying a little more busy. But you see, he's starting to throw a punch and trying to get out at the same time like he just did there. Yeah. And that's hard to get your respect when you do that. He's able to, listen, he's, he's probably winning the fight. He's winning these rounds. But again, you also want to have an eye towards the future as far as being able to knock off, you know, better fighters. And these are some tactics that will disrupt an opponent, but I don't know how, at a higher level if they'll work. And if it doesn't, it'll just make a lot of money on cryptocurrency. Yeah. <laughs> and AI. Final 10 seconds. Well, if he's doing the crypto, if this doesn't work out, he can just buy ProBox. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, does that mean we should say some very nice things about him tonight? Might be. <laughs> Might be a good idea. <laughs> Do we, do we know uh, if crypto is going to work? We don't. No, we don't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't take our... Don't, yeah, don't, no, do no not take advice. business advice from us, please. All we know is that he studied it. <laughs> Blockchain. Yeah, he studied it, not us. Chocolatito, 51 and 4, 41 knockouts. First boxer from Nicaragua to win a world title in four weight classes. Surpassing the late great Alexis Arguello and Chocolatito and Marcos have a great relationship. Right now it's Lopez who is being tutored by Marcos Caballero. Round number five, this one's scheduled for 10. There's that right hand shot from Lopez, catches Zena, and there it is again. He is compact and powerful. Needs to be set to punch though, which is why Zena has had some success on the outside with these pot shots. Zayn also made a good point is that, you know, the last minute notice, he's, he's not going to be able to figure out my style. And Zayn does have a very tricky style yes. that takes a second to kind of figure out. Oh, good overhand looping shot there from Zayn. catches Lopez. Lopez. But you see how he doesn't commit right to it, it because he's halfway trying to get out while he's throwing a punch. Yeah. So you never really get your respect that way. You can see he doesn't want to be anywhere near Lopez when they're on the inside. The original opponent was Christian Baez, who's been here on Pro Box TV before. That fight would have been at 140. This one at 147. And Baez Lopez also comes a in on short, a very tough fighter. Impressive here in our Pro Box futuristic streaming service, your boxing channel. It's 
tough. Sometimes you get these last minute guys, but they're already in shape. Yeah. <laughs> Lopez looks to be super fit to me and uh, doesn't look to be slowing down at all, even though he's, his punch output's not very high. I don't think that's really his style to begin with. Yeah, but you see, it's also, he's going to be able to follow Zane all night because, again, if you look at the way Zayn throws his punches, he's half committing, half already trying to escape while he's throwing the punch. So you never get enough on any shot to be able to, you know, get the respect of your opponent. But at the same time, if your opponent's slow on his feet, which Lopez is like cement footed, you, you, you'll find the escape route. Also, Lopez doesn't cut off the ring. But again, like I said before, you want to also have an eye towards the future. And will this work as you step up in, in class of opponent? Nearly four times the professional experience rounds fought for 37-year-old Lopez. Coming in with 41 bouts, 228 rounds, 13 for Zanin, 60 rounds. I mean, Lopez has 22 knockouts. Zayn yeah. has 13 fights. It's a great point. Ooh. And he's throwing again, but he Look. keeps missing with that right. Not by much, though. Yeah, he was looking for number 23 on that one. You got that right. The Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Zayn keeping the jab in the face of Lopez. And if you notice, any time that right hand comes from Zayna, he's lifting his back foot because he's already trying to spin out as he's throwing it. So, again, it's hard to get leverage on that right hand if you, if you don't plant that back foot and turn with it. Nice. Uppercut and good overhand right from Zayna. Double hook from Tarrant. Very little body work from Lopez. Almost none. Yeah, as a matter of fact, probably more body work from Zayna. Absolutely. away today, right? You gotta go win it. Without going crazy, without going reckless, you're gonna be throwing some punches, right? You waste some energy and, and moving some Interesting why we were in commercial break. At the corner of Zanin said, you're letting an easy fight become way too close. Oh, absolutely. That's, I think that the corner was, that was an excellent, what they said, if they're not giving away fights tonight, you gotta go out there and win this fight, be the boss, be the man, win the fight. And he's absolutely right. So let's see if there's a little bit more activity, a little bit more aggression here from Tarek Zanin in the silver and black as we've reached the second part of this 10-round fight. White and green for Lopez, the 37-year-old. Lopez is coming out. Yeah, he's coming out pressuring, but again, no cutting off the ring. And Zayn has got very well thought out footwork. That's the way to describe it. Little touch shots there by Zayn. Lifestyle is you've always got to be ready and stay ready. That's what Zayn said, and Lopez showing us that that is how he's been living his life. A guy like Zayn, you gotta cut off the ring. I mean, it's gonna be impossible to track him down if you don't. But when he, if he comes up against guys who know how to cut off the ring, he's gonna run into problems. And that's why he's got to adjust some of his style as he moves up the ladder. Big overhand right there from Zayn. And if his corner, if his trainer's saying you're making an easy fight, really close, making it difficult, what happens when that tough fight is in front of you? Or when you got a guy who's not coming on a short notice. Yep. Like Christian Bayes. Yeah. yeah. Both fights thus far have gone the distance. This one in round six. There's a body shot from Tarek Zanin. That's probably the shot that he turns on the best, actually. He's that left hook to the body, Zanin. Yeah, he gets a nice dig on that. I mean, the will is there from Lopez. He just doesn't have the, the skill nor the ability to track down Zayn. Just not pulling the trigger when he has the opportunities. He's getting himself in position, even with those slow feet, but he's just not not pulling the trigger. Yeah, and like you said, champ, you know, he's just not going to the body enough. You know, the, the head can move, but the body can be there, and he just doesn't go to the body. 
a little hook there from Zayno. I mean, from uh, Lopez, he did a hook there again. Which I, I, I don't understand. He's got a good corner. You know, they were telling him to jab. I mean, why, why would they not think of the body? Look at the length in the torso of Zayno. I would think that, especially body type-wise, Lopez would be looking to target that bread basket all night long. And Zayno, of course, keeps doing what he's doing. You know, if it's working, he's not trying to fix what's not broken. But some of it also has to be common sense. You shouldn't need your corner to, to tell you to go to the body against yeah. the guy who's moving that much. Especially when, you, when you've got over 40 professional fights, which Lopez does. Combination there by Zayn. Big swing and a miss there from Lopez. Number seven, the corner of Tarek Zanin said, I need you to win these next two rounds. Might be next two, three, and four, seeing this one's scheduled for 10. <laughs> but the next two would be a good start, right? Not everybody's a math guy like you. <laughs> you know what, it's crazy. Zanin's probably winning almost every round, though. Yeah. Can you really give Lopez many rounds? Maybe one? Nice jab. I mean, Zanin's landing all the punches. It's not really the, uh, the the fact of winning. It's the fact of are you gaining ground as far as improvements for the future because you have an undefeated record and you're going to be looking to step up. And also at the same value, are you making yourself worthwhile to watch in the future? And you might have an older fighter coming in on short notice, but the fact of the matter is you've got an experienced fighter on short notice that has been in there for many, many rounds of competition. And Zane there's not going to be many him. tricks. Zayna turned us up on him. No, but on paper, this is a nice win for Zayna if he gets yes. it, you know? Good, good right hook there from Zayna. Catches Lopez. There we go. He's doing really good work from the southpaw position. I mean, Lopez, the last thing he, he was hoping was Zayna turn to southpaw. He already yeah. couldn't track him out right-handed. Now, now he's got him southpaw. Zayna's, I'm, so, I'm impressed with Zayna's footwork in the southpaw <laughs> position. <laughs> And honestly, he's throwing harder he's shots. He's one of these guys that's going to be difficult to look good against. Nice. Very effective here in this round. Leaving the orthodox stance behind. And that orthodox position has completely shut Lopez off. I mean, his whole style is anything but orthodox, right? And ironically, the fight in Russia was to be against the southpaw. Back to righty, his corner says, and right on cue, Tarek listens. Back Lance to southpaw. Good, two good right hands. Nice and post and slide out there. Yeah, and again, Lopez had him where he wanted him and didn't throw a punch. Yep, that's been the story of the fight all night for Lopez. Get there, and then don't, don't pull the trigger. And that sometimes happens when you're 37 as well. Yeah, true. You see the openings and you can't pull that trigger the same way. Now he tripped over Zayn's feet. And respectfully, Zanin did say he's watched the last couple of fights of Lopez's. And he, again, with respect, said his best days may be behind him. But 37, three and one, pretty impressive record for the native of Argentina, Argentina, the Argentinian.
Breathe, come on, breathe. Cuidado con uno. Huh? Uno nomás. Three rounds left. Correcto. Okay. Let's go. Good round. Keep, listen, I don't want you pushing the shot, Baba. Don't, don't do done. this. Just touch. Pa, pa. And Touch. He can't match his speed. When he's a punching back following. Punches, he's going to swing. Make a miss. Pa, 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 and step to the side. All right? Too fast, bro. Let's go. Minutes. Hey, listen to me. This is Sandstorm look good as a southpaw. That was one of his better rounds, especially offensively. And he put some power behind it, especially from the southpaw position, the right hook. There we see the setup, down punch, straight down low. To look, the he's, getting out, right he's still getting out as he's throwing the shots, yeah. though. <laughs> that was actually a decent shot. But look at his back foot, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. His back foot's always off the ground because he's always, he's on his way out as he's throwing. The only guy I could ever saw who could generate power with his back foot off the ground was Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao didn't need both feet on the floor to hit you hard. Yeah. Yeah, that's a interesting one. <laughs> that's not going to be another issue. <laughs> and Eric Morales, of Even course, had that all those weight classes up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Eric wow. Morales had Amazing. the trilogy with Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> yeah. That's where Tarek Zanin trains at Eric Morales' gym in Tijuana. TJ. TJ. A lot of great sparring over there, I'm sure. And he said, I was going to be here for six months. I've been there for three years. I love it. It has everything. Southpaw stance again, round number eight. That's pretty cool to hear from a guy who's been to how many countries? 54. 54. 54, yeah. Yeah. And picks TJ. That's cool. Yes, he did. And likes it. Yeah. Loves it, apparently. Great interview. Obviously, highly intelligent. Said, pick a language. I got four. <laughs> You know, Lopez doing all this work trying to track down Zane. If he just cut off the rig, he'd, he'd save himself so much trouble. He, he's took he's took 4,000 more steps than he's needed yeah. to. <laughs> all the circles on his Apple Watch are complete tonight. Yeah, he's, he's getting his steps in tonight. But Zane, and, very and, slippery, man. That lateral movement. Good conditioning, too. And, and and the thing is, you know, there will be guys that will complain about Zane, and in some ways, rightfully so, right? Because it's not, it's not always an entertaining style to watch like this. But at the same time, if you're 37 years old and made your living as a pressure fighter and don't know how to cut off the ring, you should have hung up your gloves a long time ago. <laughs> if your game is pressing fighters, pressuring, and, and you don't know how to cut off the ring, then you're not in the right business. Because that's going to be one of the first things you learn if you're going to be a pressure fighter. Well, there's, there's a reason we have Nancy Lopez in a, in a big fight. Nine fights for Lopez oh. since March of 2015. It's a good timing shot from Lopez. Zayna took it well. He's got a good chin, too. Yeah. It's a good point, too. When you do hit, finally hit him. Yeah. He actually he, takes it well. He got hit pretty clean there, and he, he took it well. well if he's sparring in TJ, oh, he's got hit there. Get it there again. Yeah, he would have left up. Can you imagine what they must think of him in the TJ gyms? I mean, Mexicans love guys who stay still and brawl. Oh, Can you imagine this kind of Tijuana gym? Yeah. I remember being in the Robert Garcia's gym. That's not even as bad as the Tijuana gym. They hated me in there. <laughs> you imagine what they would think of Zayn? Oh, forget it. Stand still. Let me hit you already. They must like him. <laughs> they must like him as a person because yeah. they definitely don't like sparring him. Lopez has had a better round in terms of landing punches, but Zane is still controlling the action from the outside, being very, very slippery. Throws that left hook. Lopez able to duck under. Snaps the jab. He's mentioning that some of the best shots landed for the fight tonight from Lopez happened in that last round, but Zayna took them all really well. I mean, he's shown a, a pretty solid chin to go along with that slippery movement. in March. Full 10 rounds for Lopez. Lost by unanimous decision. Coming off a 10-round 
draw against Jesus Siracho back in June is Tarek Zanin, round number nine. He just got sprayed with sweat. One good thing about this fight is you're definitely not going to see any blood to get sprayed with. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Snapping jab lands onto the chin of Lopez. Yeah, we haven't had a lot of 10 rounders as of late, either because they weren't scheduled or we had right. knockouts. And now we're getting all that sweat sprayed as you get into the late rounds. Look at Lopez, all that head movement, all that energy he never got to use tonight because he couldn't find he couldn't find Zeno. So he has all this energy that he still hasn't used. Well, I'm, I'm curious when Lopez is going to feel some urgency. Like he hasn't changed. He's fought every round the exact same. Explosive, explosiveness there from Lopez. You can definitely see why he oh, scored 22 knockouts. Oh yeah, he's a he's a he's a he's a fire plug. Yep. But Zanin's movement in the ring has prevented Lopez oh, from right scoring big from, tonight from Lopez. Lopez having a decent round so far, right? Yeah, he's he's landed some good shots the last two rounds. But it's one of those situations where Lopez seemed like all night, he's like, ah, once I touch you, I'll get you. But Zane is showing a, a solid chin. Yeah, and a, and a pesky lead hand as well from both stances. In the corner, nice uppercut. Southpaw switching seamlessly to orthodox. And you see, Zane knows how to steal those moments here and there before taking off again or smothering you. Tariq said, don't fall asleep. Very good instruction in the corner of Tariq, Tariq all night, Tariq all night long. And again! Gotta stay switched on with a guy like Lopez. Yep. Lopez strikes me as the kind of guy, he's 37, but I feel like he'll be fighting until he's 87. He might be. He said he feels fresh, never been hurt. Comes into this one on short notice. Conditioning not a factor. It's the footwork and movement of Zanin that's been the big challenge for Lopez. Final 15 of round number nine. Come on, Terry. Our main event still to come. Orlando Ooh. Gonzalez. Ooh, big right hand from Zanin there. He landed a really nice one on the ropes, tried it for another one, just missed. And Jorge Castaneda. Fuck his ball. Let's go. This is it. Come on. Don't tomorrow. Don't, 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 let let this. don't let this rounds go away. Come on, you're not tired. You really don't. Come on. There's some concern in the corner of Zane, and that's for certain. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they should be concerned in terms of the scorecard or letting the fight go away, but like like, like the champ Paul Manaji has been saying all night in terms of his future progression in this fight. They want him to do more, which is understandable, but um, he's been doing some good work. You know, had a really nice right hook there. We saw that in the replay. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the scorecard no. are in danger of him losing the fight unless one of the judges is blind. You know, but, I mean, you, you actually, you'd need two of the judges to be blind. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> or if he flew up from Argentina today. Yeah. Or Morocco and wrote his uh, and wrote his scorecard on the way in. Tenth and final round, three minutes remain. 12 0 and one. Tarek Zanin, silver and black trunks. 37-year-old Marcelino Nicholas Lopez in the white and green. Zane credit though, man. He's in shape. I mean, to fight this style, you've got to be conditioned. Oh, absolutely. He isn't. He has not slowed down at all in terms of the footwork and the slipperiness and even his snap, you know, snap on his shots. Like, can barely tell it's round number 10. Gives you a thousand different looks, so you can never really track them down as far as the target is concerned. You've got to, basically the approach you'd need is to cut off the ring and aim for the body, try to slow him down. 
But, but at the same token, he, he kind of fakes himself out of his own shoes. Yeah. That oh, he yeah, doesn't, absolutely. doesn't sit there to, to land hard shots. Looking to put together a combination and, there. And even then, a lot of them are on punches. Well, Zane had said he'd like to get in there with someone like a Brandon Lee at 140 pounds. And I know what you're thinking, Polly, right now. He's got some, some work to do and some evolution. I think he can make anybody look bad. I don't know if yeah. he'd be successful in winning the fight with his style. You know, he'd, he'd, need, he'd need to, you know, button up a few things about his style. You know, and, that, and these are the kind of fights like tonight where you should be working on them, and instead he's kind of just perfecting what he already does, which, again, is only going to get him to a certain level. I think even against a Brandon Lee, who's a very good prospect, I feel, strong and, and has his, you know, his wits about him as far as fundamentals are concerned of how to leverage his shots, he, he, I don't know that he'd, he'd be able to win, but he, he, I think a style like Zayn would always make you look bad. But you don't want to just be the guy to make guys look bad. You want to actually have success at that higher level because that's actually the most important level. That's the level that counts. 45 seconds remain in this fight. Good snap from Lopez. That was after three jabs, though, from Tarek Zanin. Having said that, this is only Zanin's 14th pro fight, so. Correct. Let's see. He is 28, though, so he does have to get moving. But again, he's calling out those names. So, yeah. you know, cool. I don't care how many fights he has, if you're going to call those out. I mean, yeah. listen, I always tell the young guys, when you want to step up, there's no looking back. It's only up from there. Yeah. And it would be at his natural weight of 140 as we wrap up our co-main event of the evening. They go the distance. Marcelino Lopez and Tarek Zanin. Coming up next, it is our main event of the evening, and it is gonna be a fun one. Orlando Gonzalez is back here on Pro Box TV, 21 and two in his professional career, set for a 10 round super featherweight matchup for the WBA Continental North America super featherweight title against 16 and two, Jorge Castaneda. That is our main event still to come. Take it from round one, guys. It was pretty much the same story every round. <laughs> you took the words right <laughs> we, can, we, we can take it from any round we want. It's the same story every round. Yeah. Uh, Lopez not cutting off the ring. Zayna being too quick. When he is trapped, he's either smothering or, uh, or, or bumping off Lopez and getting off first. Uh, Lopez following around, not throwing punches, barely a jab, not going to the body, not cutting off the ring, you know. And Zayna never really coming out of a certain gear even to try to you know assert himself more just doing just enough to win every round landed some good shots especially late but like like you were alluding to all night long seemed like he was on his way out the door before he finished punching most of the night there we saw a good clean shot there from lopez but zayna took it well see there the hook at the end he's on his way out as he's throwing yeah, it yeah. So the judges have rendered their decision. Let's see if Tarek Zenon remains unbeaten. Once again, we get it up to Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 well-boxed rounds, we go to the scorecards. Tito Wilgo scores at 97-93. Shami Shipman sees at 98-92. And Brian Gary's scorecard reads 99-91 for your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated, Tarek the Sandstorm Zayna! 13-0-1, a dominant performance on the judges' scorecards and a winner by unanimous decision in our co-main event of the evening. Coming up next, our main event of the evening, featuring Orlando Gonzalez.
Welcome back to Wednesday Night Fights here on your boxing channel, Pro Box TV. Mike Goldberg, my powerful partners, Pauli Malinaji, Chris Algieri, set for our main event of the evening in the open. Pauli talked about Orlando Gonzalez, so now it's your turn, Chris. Yeah, so I talk about, uh, I'm talking about Orlando Gonzalez. Okay, yes, yes. listen, my best Susano fight, I mean, was fantastic. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Pauli, I think my partner here put it perfectly. He can box, he's yeah. got skills, he's very classy, but he also can dig down and fight down and fight, which is why we love him here on Pro Box. He's got that will to win. He does not mind engaging, but he can always step back out and go, on a, go back to boxing. I think he's actually better off when he does that, but he's got that Puerto Rican spirit. He likes to rumble, and again, that's why we love him here on Pro Box. Yeah, we got a matchup of uh, Mexico and Puerto Rico tonight with uh, the border town of Laredo, Texas. Dad from Mexico, mom from the U.S. for Jorge Castaneda. Yeah, this casting to have enough to really force that kind of fight. You know, right. we've seen Castaneda get stopped after a good start to his career. He's, he's kind of, sometimes it looks like he's had a beaten out of him. He's more one of these guys who's here, not on the edge of, 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 of the upper level, but on the edge of the lower level trying to stay up here. So he's got a little bit of an emergency in his career in that he's got to stay at this level, trying to get closer to the higher level, while Gonzalez is more right on the verge of that upper level trying to get a win over a guy like Castaneda so he can keep moving forward. So this Castaneda has that, can have that belief in himself that he may have had earlier in his career. That's that's what we're going to find out tonight because Gonzalez is of a, of a good level. And that's a great point Paulie brings up. Gonzalez, two losses, went the distance both times. Castaneda stopped both times he has been set back. Our tail of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. Gonzalez, 28 years old. Castaneda is 27 three inches shorter, but the reach is virtually identical. This one for the WBA Continental North America Super Featherweight title. And once again, we get it up in the ring to Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our Pro Box TV main event of the evening. 10 rounds for the vacant WBA Continental North America Super Featherweight title. Your judges, Rose Lesen, Rodolfo Aguilar, and Tito Wilgo. And your referee in charge is Michael De Jesus. Introducing to you first fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the orange and blue. He weighed in at 128.6 pounds. His record, 16 wins, two losses with 12 wins by knockout from Laredo, Texas. Please welcome Jorge Castaneda. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks. He weighed in at 130 pounds even. His record, 21 wins, two losses with 12 wins by knockout from Aguadilla, Puerto Rico. Orlando Capu Gonzalez. Dale viendo el gol en el ángulo y el rincón. Toca guante si quieres, si no para tapar el rincón. If tonight is anything like the night we saw back in July with Gonzalez and Susana. Buckle up, set for our main event of the evening. Here we go. It's time to fight. The Southpaw, Orlando Gonzalez in the white trunks. His opponent, 27-year-old Jorge Castaneda in the orange and blue trunks. Gonzalez training at the Atlantic Boxing Club in Puerto Rico. In Atlantic Boxing Club in Long Island, huh? Yeah. Oh, good right hook over the top there. You have the Gonzalez. mountains in the beach and the one in Long Island, Paulie? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Maybe some beach. <laughs> Maybe some beach. Orlando trained by his father and also his cousin, Henry LeBron, 19-0 and 0 as a professional. It's Mike Murphy's gym, right, champ? Yep. Atlantic. Atlantic Boxing Gym, out. yep, out on Long Island. It's on the Atlantic. <laughs> yeah, technically, yeah. yeah. Technically. <laughs> oh, sometimes Goldie. <laughs> I know. Come out with some good ones. It's that big brain, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're on. 
fun tonight. We said, said it, man. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> it's that age. It's that other, the, another year of wisdom. Another year of wisdom. We're saying, you were saying uh, uh, geography before, right? And yeah. Now, and now mathematics. Oh, no, mathematics and now geography. And cryptocurrency. Yep. <laughs> Trifecta. Talk about a man of the world. Man of the future. Oh! A little sharp counter there by Castaneda. Yeah, that left hook over the top. Great weapon against the southpaw. Castaneda, 12 of his 16 wins, guys, have been by knockout. And Castaneda, you know, with that height, can get you reaching in. So if Gonzalez doesn't negotiate that 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 distance the right way, Castaneda has, will have opportunities to catch Gonzalez coming in. Yeah, and we spoke about... Oh! They are going at it early here in our main event. Gonzalez trying to make short work of Castaneda. And we mentioned at the top that Castaneda has been stopped in his two losses. And he's kind of a slow starter at times, guys. Yeah. Know? He did get stopped in the first round a few fights ago. But part of that is because he's in there trying to win. Oh, man. Good check hook. Yep, finished in a minute and 35 seconds by Eduardo Rocky Hernandez. Good counter to the body by Gonzalez. Gets a warning from referee De Jesus for being slightly low, but he's thinking. He's thinking in there. He's not just head hunting. Although Castaneda, despite taking his clean shots, is the one trying to stalk. I don't think he knows how to do anything else, honestly. This is the way he fights. Gonzalez doing a great job splitting the guard of Castaneda. He's got that high guard coming forward. Good start for Orlando Gonzalez. night of work just four finishes in his last 11 fights eight of his 12 finishes came in his first 10 professional fights he's the southpaw on the white Castaneda in the orange and blue trunks from the border town of Laredo Texas first career loss for Orlando Gonzalez was to Robesi Ramirez, the WBO featherweight world champion, two-time Olympic gold medalist. Another loss was to Misael Lopez. Oh, man, that left hand. Gonzalez really has found a home for that thing. Yeah, and it's a counter, good counter left hand, too. He tries to time Castaneda's long jab with it. Castaneda stopping right in front, right in, right in position to get hit with that shot. There he pulls away. As he got, I think Gonzalez at times can be caught reaching when he's trying to lead with that shot. So what he does, he actually land, does a, the best job of landing that left hand on the counter. And Castaneda gives up his own height trying to throw. And Gonzalez, and Castaneda does do that at times. Yeah. And Gonzalez trying with that check hook. We saw that in the Sasena fight. Yep. He used that quite well. Looks like he's throwing a little bit wide here early on. I'm telling you, I can see the power in Castaneda. He does have heavy hands, and Gonzalez, is, even though he hasn't really been touched with anything too big, you can see the concern in his face when Castaneda lets those hands go. Yeah, a lot of times these tall guys, they'll have that leverage, those, that driving shot. Eight-week camp with Marcos Caballero in Coachella for Castaneda. Family business for Orlando Gonzalez. Blood from the nose of Castaneda, which I'm not surprised. That thing swelled up right away when he got hit last round. And, 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 and Gonzalez has landed some clean left hands down the middle. Dad 
Floyd and Uncle Luis Perez. Professional boxers, Uncle Luis represented Puerto Rico at the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta. Oh, that's with, uh, that with was with Miguel uh, Miguel's, Cotto's Miguel's older brother. brother. Yep, yep. Jose. Oh, just that check hook. Yeah, good combination. It was a little bit slappy on the hook. But, uh, and didn't turn the knuckles over, but still a good shot. Oh, that's that a good shot. Bad. Wow. And down goes Capsiliana. Yeah, his legs stiffened up badly. Good double hook there by Gonzalez. Textbook combination, body head. I don't think Cassini understands what's going on. The ref's telling him, show me, put your hands up and show me you can fight, and he's not putting them up. Into the round. He may get saved by the bell. His legs still out there. Textbook combination from Gonzalez here. Right hand, left hook, uh, right, right hand hook to the body with the, yeah, double, to the body boom, there, boom. and then right to the head over the top. Big shot. Yeah, right to the temple, champ. Castaneda was in a world of trouble. Yeah, and that's what it is when it comes automatic. You see, he didn't think about it. He did automatic. Touch to the body, and touch to the head. And Castaneda, two up high. You see, Gonzalez, a good shot. Castaneda gets too close, but he keeps his height. It's good to have a height if you understand your range, but when you get close, you've got to kind of bend your knees a little bit. You can't be up that high, especially when you have the height of a guy like Castaneda, it's even more. And especially when you fight as square as Castaneda does, being tall and square, you're just you're a big target, even though you're a thin guy. And we were talking about how he's been stopped in both of his losses. He does not take the best punch, so he's got to be make sure to be defensively responsible to, to prevent himself from getting hurt. And the crowd here tonight at our Pro Box TV World Headquarters loves Orlando Gonzalez, who has fought seven times in Orlando, Florida. This is 13th fight here in the United States. Well, then there's a lot of Puerto Ricans. Yep. Oh, Gonzalez is being smart, not, not ignoring the body shots either, landing some nice left hands to the liver side of Castaneda. Orlando said he welcomes tough matchups, big challenges, never shies away. Very excited to be back on Pro Box and Really thrilled to be here at our Pro Box World Headquarters and off to a good start with the second round knockdown of Castaneda. Oh, big left hand over the top. Straight right, a straight left hand that time. Oh, oh to off the, the feint too. Nice combination. Off the feint, froze Castaneda and then dropped the two-punch combo. This is what I like about Gonzalez. He can be classy and a killer at the same time. Yeah, he's thinking in there. Yep, absolutely. Technically, technically fundamentally, we're good. Good speed, good snap on his shots. And he's a thinker. Castaneda though, man, he's got will for days. He puts himself in position to be hit though. He's gotta be responsible as he's pressing. That's another thing, when he's hurt, he goes right to throwing punches and that's when he gets clipped a lot. Well, he's gotta have something if Marcos Caballero is training him in Coachella. But Gonzalez off to a great start here in our main event. Another thing that Gonzalez showed in that Sasana fight was a great gas tank. That, yes. was, that was a tough, yeah. fast-paced fight for 10 rounds. That was a fun, fun fight. Yeah, yeah, you gotta get better coming off fights like that. Those are the really fights that really reveal a lot about yourself that you may not even know, you, things you may not even know you had inside. I made my friends and family watch that fight afterwards. <laughs> it was that good. <laughs> Again, nice. that kind of left hand. Nice job getting the head off line there. Again, threading the needle with that left hand. 28-year-old Orlando Gonzalez. This is his fourth fight at 130 pounds. Setting nice traps as Gonzalez. Stops on a dime, Ooh, fires hard shots. Ooh.
close out 2023 Wednesday, December 13th with a 10 round super lightweight main event. Montreal moving to the Sunshine State. Baruzan Jukimbaev from Kazakhstan, fighting out of Montreal, 21 and 1, will face off against Mohamed Mumu, born in France, now living and training in beautiful Montreal, Quebec, Canada, plus Kelvin Davis, Naji Lopez, and Dominic Baye. Wednesday, December 13th, right here on Pro Box TV. Round number four of our main event. Is the Moon still with uh, Roy Jones as well? I, I believe so, yeah. Mm. We, when he made his debut here on Pro Box TV against Cesar Francis, that's when he got his jaw broken early, yeah, but they went yeah. the distance. And then he came back on our air on the undercard of the Susana Gonzalez. Fight, that's right. And got a big win against an undefeated fighter. Oh! That'll be Kazakhstan by way of Montreal against, against France by, by way, way of Pensacola. Yeah. Oh, man. yeah. Both. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to put in a request to the merchandise department that we get Pro Box uh, blankets to cover us from the blood that we get in these fights because... You getting hit? Not yet, but I'm, I, I, I sense it coming on. That nose yeah. is, is, is leaking a little bit. Get some Pro Box bibs <laughs> for ringside. All he has is BYB smock. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I forgot that one. You know, I gotta, I gotta use it here too. <laughs> unless, well, unless well, the, the merchandise department from oh. get, gets the memo from the champ Chris over here. Good body shots here by Gonzalez again. Champ, like you said earlier, he does not neglect the body despite the success he's had to the head. Or Paulie will just put anything he can in front of him, like Sunday night dinner, his entire life. You know, we we, we, were, we just had Tarek Zana just get a win on the under, uh, uh, in the co-main event here. He should watch a guy like Gonzalez because yeah. he's got great lateral movement, stops on a dime, still lands power, and doesn't exit before he lands his shots. Very good, classy stuff from Gonzalez here. Yeah, we're very well schooled. If Anderson Silva's precision was precise, Orlando Gonzalez's oh. versatility is versatile. Oh, good right hand there from Casaneda over the yeah. top. Yeah, he can Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo. He caught Gonzalez a couple of times there, guys. You know, pressure bust pipes. Casaneda has not stopped coming forward. Some of that pressure may be starting to pay off. I told you, I saw it in that first round. Gonzalez did not look comfortable when Castaneda was punching. Some guys just have that crack. And Castaneda rebounded from the first round TKO loss to Rocky Hernandez by finishing Nestor Medellin in the eighth and final round back in August of this year. Is Castaneda turning this momentum around here, guys? Round four. Castaneda is one of those guys. If you hurt him, you better get him out of there because he's going to come on late. He is undeterred by getting hurt and getting dropped badly. Trying to make up that point right here, right now. And then again, Castaneda getting all kinds of fired up. We got ourselves a fight. Don't bite standing up. Stay bent over. Work the first 60 seconds. Stay calm. Turn up the pace. In the final two minutes, the advice from Orlando's father, Orlando Gonzalez Sr. Has Castaneda figured something out, though? Is he going to start the round with high pressure to, that will that may not allow Gonzalez to work calmly in that first minute? But also, is that going to open him up for the power shots of Gonzalez and the precision punching? White trunks for Orlando Gonzalez, 21 and 2. Jorge Castaneda is 16 and 2. He is in the orange and blue trunks. Southpaw Gonzalez against the Orthodox fighter Jorge Castaneda.
And, and champ, the answer is yes, of course. That's why they're here to fight you. That's why we have them on Pro Box. Exactly. So they can walk right into each other's offensive weapons. That's why the matchmakers have made this match. Yep. You got that right. Even fights that start out one side, it end up being fights. <laughs> CA and the other A side. Exactly. Oh, nice short right hand from Casting Hated down the middle. Gonzalez responds in kind with his left hand. Well, I said if this is anything like the fight we saw in Kissimmee from Orlando Gonzalez and Romero Sassena, we're going to have ourselves a lot of fun and starting to heat up. Oh, boy, man. These are heavy shots from both guys. Castaneda just gets so square on the inside. Standing in the pocket and trading. And we spoke about how Gonzalez has great boxing ability, but tends to bite down and fight even when it's not in his best interest. Kapu, a nickname given to him by his mother, a flower in which the petals have not yet separated, but another of his nicknames is the Golden Southpaw. Puerto Rico. Oh. Coming on strong here. Two up high on the ropes. One minute. To work diligently in the first 60 seconds. Turn it up in the next 120, and that's exactly what Gonzalez is doing here right now. Both sides of the body, Gonzalez. Right hook, then left hook. Castaneda returns fire. I like that right uppercut to the body that Castaneda is throwing. Right, getting right between the elbows. There it is again. Those shots suck. They hit you right in the solar plexus. You think you're going to block it and still gets through. Mm. There it is. Right liver there, side. Chris. Oh, yeah. That was the liver side. Here. Turn into a phone booth for you, fight guys. I'm not mad at it. Oh, no. Nobody's on their bike in this one. Yeah, Zayna used enough of the ring for, <laughs> for a couple of different guys last fight. <laughs> I think it probably says it. Knockdown in the second and some punishment in the last round from Gonzalez to Castaneda. Wow. Castaneda again, too up high there against the ropes. So you want to keep a small target when you're up against the ropes. It was a good exchange in that round, too. We get some good replays for Gonzalez, but Castaneda's been dishing some out as well. Yeah, that round especially. It was a back and forth round, even though all those replays were for Gonzalez. Castaneda did not have a bad round either. Round number six, our main event of the evening, scheduled for 10 for the vacant WBA Continental North America Super Featherweight Belt. Hey, when Castaneda went down a few rounds ago, you didn't think he was going to go much longer, right? Very yeah. true. And the way that Gonzalez came out in round number one as well, Paul. Mm -hmm. No, until that point, I mean, it, was, it looked like it was going to be a short night, but at some point, Castaneda got pissed off. Can we say that? Yes, yeah. you, you, just, you just did. <laughs> and that was it. Now we got to fight. I think somebody just said, let's have a dog fight. We have one. Who was it? Uh, uh, Mr. T and Apollo when, when, uh, when uh, in the corner of Apollo, uh, Apollo and uh, uh, Paulie are saying, is he's getting hurt? No, he's not getting hurt. He's getting mad. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Castaneda got mad after getting dropped. I, I keep wanting to correct some of the, the technical flaws of Castaneda, but I don't think it matters. That, he doesn't care. He's here to fight. Pulling back straight. He's tall. gets tall along the ropes. It doesn't matter. He's just here to, to land punches. And Marcos Caballero said he's a good fighter, good technique. He actually listens to the corner. And much like you said about Gonzalez, the trainer of Castaneda said he knows when to box, when to move, 
and when to really get in and brawl. And we've seen it all from both guys. Definitely got the fighter's will and mentality, does Castaneda. He was, in a, he was in a world of trouble and got up angry. And has been pretty consistent and having some good, good rounds these last few. Clubber Lang reference from Paulie Molinaggi. <laughs> well, Clubber was in the ring, but Apollo and Paulie were talking in the corner. Yep. <laughs> Oh, good left hands there by Gonzalez. That's something that he has managed to keep finding. Just hasn't hurt Castaneda as much as he did earlier. To the body. Gonzalez getting back on that good lateral movement, stemming the tide and the pressure of Castaneda, picking his punches much better now. Chip, you got a point, though, because Castaneda landed a right hand there, and Gonzalez went away, you know? Like, we, when, he doesn't, when he gets it, he's like, all right, let me reset. Right, yeah, let's, let, this guy's hands are heavy. Let's, let's, let's keep it moving. I mean, listen, there's no comparison in terms of boxing abilities here, but Castaneda is just a ton of will. He's tough, and he's got power. Ooh, hook okay. there. And you can't teach hard. Oh, good double left hook there from Castaneda. Body-head combination. And again, you see he lands, and, and, Cas and Gonzalez is like, all right, the exchange is done. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're not trading. Final seconds of the sixth. Oh. And another left hand lands. Well, Castaneda gets hit, and he's like, nah, I want to exchange. Loading up on the left. The double right hook from Gonzalez was a great shot back in round number two. There we saw the double left hook from Castaneda landed beautifully along the ropes there when he had Gonzalez backed up. Grandfather first took him to the gym at age seven. Gonzalez, as I mentioned earlier, from a fighting family, his father and his cousin, Henry LeBron, 19-0 with 10 knockouts in his corner again here on Pro Box TV. Our main event continues. <laughs> Gonzalez, the southpaw in the white. Castaneda fighting out of Laredo, Texas in the orange and blue trunks. Gonzalez slipped in his own corner there, too much water. <laughs> If it was a bucket of ice, Rogan would be going crazy. <laughs> Castaneda again trying to dig into that rib cage. Nice body shot from Castaneda. Slip that in right into the elbow. Yeah, because you know what, Gonzalez can't be slippery to the head, you know? So Castaneda. Oh, good body shot there by Gonzalez. Any one good body shot deserves another, right? That was a killer body shot. Castaneda took it well. Man, he's tough. But you see Gonzalez, good body shot again by Gonzalez. See, Gonzalez can be slippery on the inside. So Castaneda is smart to go to the body. You see on the head, the head shots, a lot of them, Gonzalez mm. able to slip. Double uppercut, body, body, answered. You know, what is with Gonzalez, I think he just loses focus at times. And when he's, when he's dialed in, he's really difficult. Those shots are beautiful, sets them up beautifully. But sometimes gets into these these exchanges and doesn't get the better of it always. Yeah, educated shot selection as the tape is loose here on the glove of Castaneda. And you see the corner of Castaneda frantically because they, they, they understand that they need to keep the pressure on Gonzalez. In that rebound win that I mentioned, after Castaneda was finished quickly by Rocky Hernandez, he said they worked the body very well, combinations, and got the late finish. And he's starting to work the body and the uppercuts here. Good upper there by Castaneda. And after that round two knockdown, who would have thought we'd be here in round number seven? These guys fighting in a phone booth, back and forth. The combination. Snap the head back, Castaneda just gets angry. Castaneda, together. Castaneda's punch resistance got better after not getting knocked down, right? <laughs> yeah. you know, sometimes you get knocked down like that, you think guys get concussions, and they, they, but man, his punch resistance got better. 
Castaneda said, I just love everything about boxing. I love to fight. Which also makes me think in that one round knockout loss, what if he would have survived that yeah. and come back? You know, yeah. he's, he's that kind of guy. Well, like you said earlier, if you hurt him, you want to get him out of there because he's going to make your life a bit more difficult if you let him last. He's making Gonzalez life hell right now. Blood from the mouth of Gonzalez. A little mark under the eye of Gonzalez. Oh, big shots from Gonzalez. As, as they get more fatigued, defense is a little more sloppy and shots are starting to land more and more for both guys. And this is where Cast Castaneda wants to be. Coming to fight, a fight of attrition oh. here. Nice little body shot, oh, right to the liver. Beautiful. And that southpaw stands from Gonzalez on the counter. And then the combinations there. Again, Gonzalez has a tendency to get straight up high at times on the inside, and Gonzalez taking advantage with those shots. But Castaneda comes right back punching. He takes some better as the fight wears on. Again, that was another replay, really focusing on the Gonzalez, but Castaneda landed some really big shots that round as well. Well, you want to talk about being in tough? Last four opponents for Castaneda, a combined record of 58, one, and two. Yikes. He's gone three and one in those four fights. And we saw Gonzalez last opponent to Cesena, so neither of these guys have been in that soft, you know? No, not at all. And he, he's also got a loss to Rebasi Ramirez, so both of these guys battle tested as they come in here tonight in the main event on Pro Box TV. The center with 16-1-1 one one going into the fight. That potential fight of the year candidate in Kissimmee, right here on Pro Box TV back in July. Good combination from Castaneda. A little phone booth style right here, guys. Gonzalez needs to, needs to be careful stopping in front and letting Castaneda work. You see Castaneda has a tendency to be up high, though. Gonzalez may also be waiting for a shot to time that. Good body shot by Castaneda. He backs up Gonzalez. And he loves digging that left into the ribcage of Gonzalez. And I remember from that Cesena fight, one of the punches that was very effective against Gonzalez was uppercuts, yep. especially the lead uppercut. And Castaneda just found his. I think he heard you, man. Just threw four in a row there. It's a great weapon against the southpaw, the lead left uppercut. A lot of times they dip right into it. Yeah, there's something to that, because Castaneda hasn't thrown one all fight. He just threw about six in a row. There's another one. And another. If it works, keep doing it. Quick hands from Gonzalez. Oh, man. What a fight. Let's go. Oh. Battle of attrition. What more do you want? Oh. It's anything like we saw in July. It might be that and then some. Go tell your friends. Wednesday Night Fights, Pro Box TV. Every main event is a classic. 30 seconds, round Whoa. eight. Gonzalez. Trying to turn it up in the latter part of this round. What Again. drama. Casting it up high, takes those shots. Aye. You can see Gonzalez gritting his teeth whenever Casino lets those hands go, whether they land or not. Again with the uppercut. And Gonzalez is not looking great. Come on. 
muerto. Está muerto. Cierra me echan el huevo. Sacamos esta pelea. Vamos. Echame el huevo, carajo. Vamos, vamos, vamos. Cierra ese cinturón y se mete, comienza a acabarlo. Doble, tres, tres, gancho, pum. If you find a punch that lands, keep going to it until it doesn't. One, two, three, four. You know what? I want to keep trying this one. That's right when you had mentioned the uppercut. But, he, but guys, he's on the other side of the ring, so if he has hearing, I mean, this guy's got like a, the hearing of a dog if he heard Chris Algieri say well, no, the he uppercut. Actually, he threw one and landed a good one, and, and then I saw you said it bothered it. Gonzalez, so I said it. And then he went back to it five, six times. Kept going back to the well, and he, he caught a right hook for it, but. Round number nine, scheduled for 10. This is close. Gonzalez, 21 and two. Castaneda, 16 and two. Vacant WBA, Continental North America Super Featherweight title will go to the victor. You know, I don't know how close this actually is on the scorecard, but it, it does seem like Castaneda could win this fight almost by knockout because he, he, he has Gonzalez very uncomfortable the last four minutes or so. Will that early 10-8 round turn out to be a difference? I mean, I would have Gonzalez ahead. I think he's done more and better work for more rounds. But Castaneda is really coming on. Tons of pressure from Castaneda. And now he actually cuts the ring off quite well, Castaneda. He's doing a good job. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Great uh, he's certainly fighting with that sense of urgency, much to your point, Chris. And Gonzalez is trying to manage the time here in the ring. You know, he's trying to take that advice that his corner had given him early in the fight by taking the first minute easy and then fighting the remainder of the round. But right now, he's at the halfway point of this round. He's trying to still take it easy. Yeah, the champ, no jab. He's just allowing Castaneda to walk him down and walk him. He's still working very hard, even though he's not punching. Finally, he's spitting out blood. The inside of his mouth must have a bad cut because it's been seeping out of his mouth, and they're just there when he tried to breathe out. A bunch of blood spit out by Gonzalez. Well, I actually remember that happened in the, in the Susana fight as well. There was a yep. lot of blood from the mouth that night. Those uppercuts. Oh, man, Castaneda is just digging Gonzalez it. holding on tight, that body shot. Yeah, he might, he's just looking to take this round off. Good shot there, though. Nice move by Michael DeJesus, the referee, to get out of the way. He's quick on his feet, too. Castaneda is the one applying the pressure. Talk about the conditioning of Castaneda, man. Listen, those knockdowns take a lot out of you, and he's, he's looking strong, got a lot of a lot of energy. Just stalking Gonzalez oh, here late. Mexican fighters, man. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's in the true. genetics. Mexico against Puerto Rico never seems to disappoint. I think Castaneda would be smart to take some of the power off of these shots, let his hands go, set his punches up a little bit, because Gonzalez is still being slippery and landing shots like that. Oh, good body shot there oh, from yeah, Castaneda. Yeah, that hurt him. Yeah, that hurt him. Yeah. And a flurry right in front of our broadcast position. Yeah, Gonzalez is suffering through the end of this round. He's getting out of there, and that body shot hurt him, guys. Final seconds. Well, left hand. All right, he says vamos in Spanish, and he lands again. I think he's better off fighting. <laughs> he yells back. <laughs> you know what, when you get kind of hurt and then you land a good shot, it gets you psyched up. I, I can feel that energy from, from uh, Gonzalez. You know, you, you feel good about yourself. Like, all right, I got hurt, but they take this back. So you can see that body shot combination there. Champ, you said it perfectly. It, nah, he was already that, Yeah, he already took it by then. That, that was a follow-up combination to that body shot. You said it. He's suffering through that round. It, it yeah. looked that way. I, I've been saying it all night. He's making faces whenever Castaneda is punched. I'm like, I think this guy can hit, and we're seeing it. You, know, you said the corner told him to take that round off. I think he did better off when he was fighting. Took that damage. He's got he's to fight. Because Castaneda is there to be hit. So they're going. Three minutes remain. Oh, man, I bet you this. I have a feeling this round is going to be all out. Buckle up. <laughs> Gonzalez in the white. Castaneda in the orange and blue.
opportunities for Gonzalez to use that jab just to stem the tide a little bit. Oh, headbutt there by Gonzalez. Bite down on the mouthpiece and leave it all in the pro box ring. Castaneda looks like he wants a 15-rounder tonight. Yeah. Still hitting hard. You can hear it ringside. Oh, man. Good exchange. I was going to say, where's that uppercut from Castaneda that he had two rounds ago? I haven't seen it since. There, there yeah. it is another one. Yeah, he's got more energy oh. than body shots. Dang it. Oh, Double, triple, 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 quadruple, quadruple, quadruple hook. Oh. Great job by Castaneda. Oh, that Hit body shot. Oh. Gonzalez trying to manage the time, trying to fight in spots while Castaneda trying to fight consistently. Oh, 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 good body shot. Walks him down, lands again. Punches and bunches. Gonzalez does not want to be in this ring any longer, nope. man. But you see, he tries to save it up. He tries to move, 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 and then, yep. and then try to put together a, a, a nice salvo. And usually the salvo looks good. Yeah, he's being smart, he's being smart. But Castaneda trying to take away the rest in between so that he has no salvo to throw. Wasting time. Oh, I'm a good uppercut. He went back to a champ. Yep. Will it be enough? No. A couple of times now he's gone for the clinch just to try to manage the time. Has Gonzalez this round? Well, the latter rounds, the statement is made more often by Castaneda. You always think about that when the judges render their decision. I'll tell you what, man. Castaneda might start slow, but it is an end slow. No. Not at all. You guys are right. He's ready for 15 rounds. Man, if you hurt Castaneda, you better hope you get him out of there, because yeah. this guy is a nightmare in these later rounds. Oh, boy. Out of the southpaw stance, man. 30 seconds. Gonzalez bites down, throws back. Oh, look at Castaneda. What a main event. Here on another Wednesday night on Pro Box TV. Gonzalez is being very tough, very slick, very smart. Oh! Oh! oh. Rounds, Woo! Go the distance! Good fight, good fight, guys. What a fight. What a fight. They're in there tonight. I'm not sleeping tonight. <laughs> Jeez. again it's in the hands of the judges good start for gonzalez and he scored the early knockdown it was such a good start you didn't think that this fight would was going to last that much longer but not only did it did it last that much longer but you ended up having castaneda having a lot of good rounds as the fight progressed there is a, after this shot right here i mean you thought this fight was on the verge of being over and it might have been if there wasn't a right at the end of the round right jim yeah i i mean i thought the fight was over i didn't think castaneda was going to be able to recover even with the one minute rest but boy, did he ever. He really came back in those middle rounds, showed some good technical proficiency with the offense. But, I mean, Gonzalez, just so slick, so smooth when he lets those combinations go, finds the opening great. But, man, Castaneda found the left hook to the body, the left uppercut to the chin, put a world of hurt on Gonzalez as the rounds wore on. There we see one of those beautiful body I mean, shots I, once again. I think it even took Gonzalez by surprise, the way Castaneda was able to not only resist the knockout, but survive the knockdown, but, but then uh, come back and make a very tough fight out of the whole thing, you know? Castaneda seemed to get stronger as it got later. Yeah, absolutely. The it toughest became, conditioning. It became a real fight of attrition as the fight wore on, and both guys put on an entertaining display for the fans. We love to bring you guys here at Pro Box TV, guys. Listen, I, if, if we can keep Gonzalez here for a while, let, let's do it. He's always in good fights. Yeah. Let's make sure to keep Castaneda here as well. Judges have rendered their decision. Gonzalez or Castaneda? Here's Mark Lichtenfeld. 
Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 back and forth action packed rounds, we go to the scorecards. Rose Lassen scores about 95 94. Castaneda. Rodolfo Aguilar scores about 97 92. Gonzalez. And Tito Wilgo sees it 96 93 for your winner by split decision. And now the WBA Continental North America's champion, Orlando! start for Castaneda, I think I ended up costing him. Aguilar, the judge, probably missed a good fight tonight, but the other two judges, you know, it, was just, it ended up just being a matter of Castaneda starting out a little too late. Actually, on one judge's card, Castaneda won the fight, but um, if, if Castaneda wasn't going to get the decision tonight, which Gonzalez earned a oh, good decision, good tough fight tonight, it's probably because Castaneda didn't gave away too many of those early rounds. None, saved our ass. None, none, nonetheless, it's a uh, a very good competitive fight, a very good show. Oh, absolutely, absolutely incredible fight. It's, it's one of those fights where you almost hate to declare a winner because that means there has to be a loser. Yeah. And, I mean, Castaneda, he didn't get the win tonight, but he is far from a loser. And he was embraced immediately by Marcos Caballero. Very proud of the effort that he put in. In this, our main event of the evening, he had been stopped in his two previous losses. This one goes the distance. And again, it delivers. And again, Orlando Gonzalez brings us a great performance here on Pro Box TV. Guys, throughout the night, we had great battles. And that man right there who just walked behind us, Jorge Castaneda, is one tough Mexican-American. Absolutely. That's that, that, that is, I, he gets my respect. I mean, I, I, said, it, I said it just before. He, he, he might have not won the fight tonight, but he's far from a loser. He, he really showed up. That was an incredible performance. And listen, Gonzalez, man, uh, he's everything that we said he was. He's always in good fights. Yep. He's got boxing skill. I mean, these guys put so much on display tonight. What, what a main event. It's the kind of thing, if you put on entertaining fights, we bring you back. You right. Saying this is, this is the kind of thing we want, and this is the kind of fans we know the fans want. And Castaneda showed himself to be a quality fighter despite the loss tonight. And, and the the beautiful thing about our platform, Paulie, is that you can take an L, but you don't lose in the big picture here on Pro Box TV, because Castaneda earned a lot of respect and opened a lot of eyes tonight. Oh, yeah, man. Especially getting up off the canvas to roar back the way he did and make it make it such a fight. You know who's respect he earned? Gonzalez. You got that right. That's for sure. Yeah. Orlando Gonzalez knows who, who Corey Castaneda is, for sure. And we end the year with a super lightweight main event. Barzan Jukimbayev, 21 and 1 against Mohamed Mamoun. Scored four knockdowns back in July in a sixth round finish of Steven Galanos. Plus, Kelvin Davis, Naji Lopez, Dominic Baye, Wednesday, December 13th, right here on Pro Box TV. First fight was so close, neither fighter lost. A draw in our opener in the bantamweight division. Marcus Valle tested like he had not been tested previously in his professional career. He is the one who remained unbeaten. Tarek took it out of Lopez and earned another victory to go to 13-0-1. And then our main event, you just saw it. It was absolutely spectacular. Gonzalez leaves with the belt. For Paul Malinaji, Chris Algieri, Mike Goldberg, saying so long until next time. We see you right back here on Pro Box TV.